All right. Peace and love. Peace and love, ladies and gentlemen. I want to first and say, first and foremost, say thank you guys for tuning in. I want to say to the um the debaters, Captain Cesarek and Vocab Malone, thank you for participating in another debate brought to you by the Brother Garfield Podcast. I have my moderator, Corey. I want to say first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, there will be no disrespect in the chat at all. Once someone be disrespectful, family, the moderators, listen, you're going to time them out. If they be disrespectful again, let's get them out of here. There'll be no disrespect towards vocab, no disrespect towards Captain Tazaria. We want to have a clean debate. And of course, I spoke to the debaters. Y'all could take shots, but no disrespect. We want to keep this panel. We want to keep this type of vibe going because we got a bunch of debates coming up. But I'm going to get out of here. Corey, the floor is yours, and I'll be here. Peace and love. Good deal. And uh, on the moderation end, uh, of course, shots will be taken, I'm quite sure, um, especially with a style bait, debate like this uh, on its magnitude. Um, but I do want to say, Brother Garfield, disrespect is definitely subjective. So we want to be able to analyze each matter if something comes up. Hopefully debaters will have uh, thick enough skin to take whatever the other mother may throw out. But of course, we're all here for the edification um, sake. Make sure you guys are sharing um, this space as much as possible to get the numbers up so people can actually watch this video and enjoy it. This is going to be a high power debate. Um, I'm Christian Corey, especially known as Nadia of Chicago. Uh, God first gang by way of Tabernacle of David. Um, so we got Vocab Malone tonight versus Captain Tazaria. The title of the debate is, Is Jesus the Biological Father of Jesus? Sorry, is Joseph, so like it, is Joseph the Biological Father of Jesus based on prophecy? Um, Captain Tazaria will be taking the affirmative. Vocab Malone will be taking uh, the negative on this form of debate. Um, but we'll start off with uh, the introduction of the debaters. I'll give Captain Tazaria the space to introduce himself uh, first and foremost, uh, a minute or so. Captain Tazaria, the floor is yours. Hey, man, I'm Captain Tazaria, a vice should be K and the commanding general Johanna. Um, I'm just ready to rock and roll. The subject of this debate, uh, pretty self explanatory, is Joseph the father and not biologically, according to prophecy. So I'll be demonstrating that through biblical prophecy, the only way Christ could be the Christ is if he was the son, the physical, biological son of Jesus Christ. And uh, that's it. I'm ready to rock and roll. The deal will bounce the ball over to Vocab Malone, the street apologist. If you can introduce yourself to the audience. We can't hear you, Vocab. I'm not sure. My name is Vocab, Christian apologist, born in Columbus, Ohio, live in Phoenix, Arizona, do a YouTube channel, try to have good conversations, and uh, I do apologetics and evangelism from a Christian perspective. All right, good deal. Let's get this debate on. Is Joseph the biological father of Jesus based on prophecy? Uh, we'll start off with the opening statements. Now, just to give uh, audience clarity, we got the opening statements, five minutes each, the entire debate. The entire form of debate, Tazariak will be going first. Vocab Malone will follow. So on the opening statements, it's five minutes each. Tazariak will go, and then Vocab Malone, I will be timing it all the way down to the second. Um, I will only interject when it's down to one minute on each section. I will unmute and say one minute left. If you hear me unmute, try not to ask me. You know, hey, what time did you say? Whatever. I'm, I said one minute left. I'm going to try to mute up to give you as much time as possible. I don't want to interrupt again because the time is still running. Um, so I'll interrupt one minute left. I'll say it loud and clear and I'll mute back up. That is for each section. Then it will move on to the first round. Um, the first round will be 10 minutes each. Tazariak will go first and then you have Vocab Malone. Then you will have the rebuttal round of the first round. That will be five minutes each. So Zariak will go first. Then you will have Vocab Malone. Then you will have the five-minute cross-examination. That's what you will have between the debaters. It will be 10 minutes total. All right? The questions will be no longer than 30 seconds, and the answers will be no longer than 60 seconds each. 
Then you will have the second cross-examination between the debaters. That will be a total of 10 minutes as well. And after that section, you will have five questions from the audience. The questions will be no longer than 30 seconds. The answers will be no longer than 60 seconds each from the debaters. And then you will have the closing statements where Vocab Malone will wrap it up first and foremost. And then Captain Cesario will close and we will have the end of the debate. Uh, do any uh, of the debaters have any questions or comments they would like to say at this time before we get to it? No, I'm good. All right, good deal. So I'm going to my clock right now to get that going for the first section. Ready? And Cap, will you be presenting anything, um, sharing your screen right now? Yeah, I'll be sharing my screen for this presentation part. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the five minute opening. Cap, if you can get your screen up so I can share that for you. And I think it's possible for you to keep it up there as well. Okay, so do you, do you see my screen? Now, there's one thing. So the only question I got is that do I have to – this is a spot I always struggle with with the PowerPoint because I think I have to do this. For y'all to see the PowerPoint, I have to do it like a slideshow or something like that, right? That's yes, I believe you have to actually manually operate it yourself. Yes, sir. Okay. So once I get it on the screen – just let me know and I'll put it on the screen. I see it, but I haven't touched it yet. Okay. So wait, you see it on the screen? Like does it Yes, does sir. It... I mean I can touch it and then it'll pop up for everybody, but I haven't touched it yet. Do you want me to go ahead and pop it up for everybody? Yeah, kind I do. All right, good deal. It should be visible. Uh people hit the <laughs> chat to let us know you'll be able to see that. And other than that, the floor is yours, Captain Tazaria. This will be the opening statement, five minutes each. The floor is yours. The time will only start when you start. Appreciate it. The topic of this the battle is, is Joseph the biological father of Jesus Christ, uh, based on prophecy, which is the most important part. Because once we establish how this was supposed to be laid out, if we change it to a woman being pregnant without a man, we have to show how the prophecy changed and where was the new prophecy given. Remember, this is about prophecy, biological definition, relating to biology or living organisms of a member of person's family, genetically related or related by blood, the rights of the biological father. So now we establish what biological means, which can only be attributed to Joseph. When I go to the next slide, we're going to start where the prophecy begins. Second Samuel 7 and 12, it says, When our days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers and set up seed after thee. Excuse me. I will set up seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels and establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name. I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father. He will be my son. This is the Lord telling David how his seed will be the one that will establish his throne forever, which is what verse 16 says. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever before thee. If I echo Romans 1 and 3, it says, Concerning his son Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. That word seed is sperma. And now when we go to Acts 2 and 29, it says, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, prophet, prophecy, and knowing that God has sworn an oath to him, God swore it, that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. Anything less, Christ is not the Christ. That is the criteria that was laid out to King David, and this is echoed in the New Testament in Acts, the second chapter. So now let's see. We go to the next slide. John 1 and 45. Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. This debate is over. The, even the prophets knew 
during that time that Jesus was the son of Joseph and that that fulfilled. Why? In Deuteronomy 18 and 18, it says, I will raise up a prophet from among their brethren, not a prophet from a woman pregnant without a brother, without a man. Like unto thee, I will put my words in his mouth. Luke 4 and 22, and all bear witness and wonder that the gracious words proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? If Vocas presents anything where Joseph is not the actual son, then what he's saying is that God, the angels, Mary, and Joseph created a conspiracy lie for Joseph to be the spiritual or stepdaddy, and God doesn't lie. John 6 and 42, and they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Everybody knew that this was the son of Joseph. Why would anybody change it? Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. That's also important because being made of a woman is not something that's special to Christ. We're all made of a woman. Matthew 11, 11, verily I say unto you, among them they're born of women. They have not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he is least in the kingdom. If I was even go to Job, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Why is that even important? Man carries the seed that he plants into the woman, but men don't bring one forth, minute left. Men don't bring forth a woman in that fashion. I'm excuse me, a child in that fashion. The woman gives birth and brings forth that woman. So I want to lay out this foundation. This is about everything according to biblical prophecy. If he brings up Isaiah 7 and 14, he has to show how that changes 2 Samuel 7 and 12. He would have to establish that. And so what I plan on demonstrating, especially in my 10-minute round in the Q&A, that the only way Christ can be the Christ is if he's the biological, physical son of Joseph. I yield. Captain Tazariak yields with 10 seconds on the clock. We'll reset the time to five minutes. That was Captain Tazariak's opening statement. Make sure y'all are sharing the space to, for people to be able to come in and get edified. Uh, we'll bounce the ball over to Vocab Malone. At five minutes on the clock, vocab, will you be sharing your screen for the opening statement? Yeah, are you able to put it back on? Yes, I can uh, tap it right now. Would you want me to go ahead and tap it? Yeah, once you do it, then I'll start. Um, we got it up on the uh, screen now. And uh, once you start, the time will start. This will be your opening statement. All right, appreciate that. Joseph is not the biological father of Jesus Christ. Um, let's see how many of my reasons I can get through. Here's my presupposition. Scriptures are the divine word of God. They prophesy the Messiah must be the son of David, but Scripture records that the Messiah was virgin born. Therefore, the Messiah is both virgin born and the son of David. There is no incompatibility. ISUPK tries to create incompatibility. It would appear when you first hear this argument by ISUPK that they're using the Jews for Judaism argument, the presuppositions which you see upon the screen. But really, that's not it. It's not even the incompatibility. It's their worry, their concern that Jesus won't be able to properly be identified as a UPK Israelite, according to the flesh. They're superimposing their One West definition on top of the scriptures, despite what any lexicon says. This debate is a question of whose son is he? What think ye of Christ? This is a question Jesus asked the Pharisees, and I asked the same thing to the Pharisees of our day. When you look at the history of this doctrine, you see that the Bible affirms the virgin birth. All these groups attack the virgin birth. This is the company that you're in when you deny the virgin birth. When you look at the scriptures, this is who knows the virgin birth is real. But yet, why doesn't Yohanna and Tazariak know? Even Yohanna's teacher, that means his teacher's teachers, now know that Mary was a virgin. The thing you're going to see today is a, is a case of what's called silanthropism, mere manism. 
And that's a denial of the virgin birth. It's actually an ancient heresy. It was later named in the 19th century, but it's an ancient heresy. And that's what's going to be on display today. We'll probably only have time to go through one reason. This is more of the opening to set the stage for the issues. Number one is Genesis 3.15, the first prophecy, the proto-euangelion. The scripture says in Hebrew, Zerah, her seed offspring bruise your head bruise his hill now ISPK, i believe interprets this as jacob and esau but the thing is there's multiple passages that show that's not the right way to interpret it and when we look at that you have to say how is it that we're going to talk about a woman having seed a woman having seed it's an irregular way to describe this isaiah 53 5 in fact even says that jesus was bruised for our iniquities and you can see this being backed up in the early church from justin martyr to irenaeus and even this phraseology messiah's heels was understood during the days of the Jews. In fact, they developed a phrase, well, I'm having trouble, oh, there we go. They developed a phrase called heels of Messiah or Messiah's heels. And so it appears in all these places on the screen. These are targums. These are Aramaic translations or paraphrases of the Hebrew scripture. So this passage, Genesis 3.15, was known by ancient Jews, Cesariac would say that's his ancestors, known to be a prophecy regarding Messiah. Now, did they see it as a virgin birth back then? I'm not claiming that, although God ultimately intended that. Fulfilled in 1 Timothy 2.15, Romans 16.20, and Revelation 20.10. Now, that's not the only Old Testament prophecy, of course, that backs up the virgin birth. Matthew brings out one, which Tazariak mentioned in his opening statement, which says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. It shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. He's describing the events that just happened and shows how Jesus fulfilled the prophecy that was fulfilled in Isaiah 8 in a more excellent way and there's even evidence from the septuagint it's on the screen take a screenshot i'm not going to be able to read all this that the translators understood this as well with the use of pronouns it's very interesting the septuagint is the key left. into this because it's 200 years before christ and so this relates to the second reason which is the alma there it is in hebrew in the dead sea scrolls translated in the septuagint as parthenos i encourage people to look up these words, because you'll hear claims about them that are not true. You'll hear it should have been Batula. However, I show you on the screen places where Alma is used that clearly mean virgin, specifically Song 6-8. This is the lexical study that you got to do before you make the claim. No one's denying but Batula can be a virgin, but to deny the Alma, especially when the translators understood that way, means a virgin as well, or can, and when the context, when it's defined, is ignorant. There's many times this is used in the New Testament. I want to draw these out because this shows you the way it's used, specifically Revelation 14.4. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. That's the same root word to describe Mary, part of us, just in the plural. Time. All right. All right, good deal. The topic is Joseph, the biological father of Jesus, according to prophecy. We will now be moving into the first round. That was the opening statement. Make sure everybody in the audience is trying to share the space as much as possible so we can get the viewers in here to get this edification. So we'll be moving back to Captain Tazariak. He will, this will be first round, 10 minutes on you, Cap. Uh, are you ready to share your screen, sir? Yes, hold on. I'm just presenting it now. Bear with me one second. No problem. So we in the first round is going to be a total of 20 minutes. Cap will be going first. Vocab will follow. All right. Hit in the chat who you with. All right. Right out of the gate. Support your support your people. Make points. Cap, you got your link up in the uh the back chat. Would you like for me to share it on the screen? Okay. Yes, I would. Let me get All to my right. PowerPoint is just being is just moving slow. Bear with me one second. Oh, no, you're fine. Right. Well, I just yeah. shared it. The time is set, but it won't start until you start. Make sure y'all following Captain Tazari on all platforms as well as vocab alone. Uh, the screen is up and the time will start when you start, Cap. That was trash. That's what I want to first say. That that was a waste of five minutes. This is not about the word virgin. 
This is about is Jesus the father, excuse me, the son of Joseph, according to biblical prophecy. But I knew he was going to go there, and we'll address the virgin in a second. I'll continue to show you prophecy. So I'm gonna show here, I'm gonna finish showing y'all who marrying him. So if I go to Luke 2, and you can start at 41 for time's sake. This is when Christ was stayed back at the temple during the Passover. His parents couldn't find him. And so in Luke 2 and 47, it says, And all that heard him was astonished at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, meaning his parents, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father, which is weird, because I thought she'd be talking about God, have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. And when he said that, verse 50, he says, and they understood not the saying that he spake unto them, which is very interesting because if an angel went to Mary and Joseph and say God made her pregnant, they would know exactly what his father's business was because Joseph is not his father physically. But if Joseph is his father physically, then maybe they don't understand because Joseph was a carpenter. To understand, answer the question, Hebrews 12 and 9, it says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? As you can see, I am staying on subject. I'm going to go into more scriptures. It says, remember that Christ, this is 2 Timothy 2 and 8. Remember that Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Again, the seed of David. Outside of Mary giving birth, you don't hear much reverence or reference to Mary. You do see a lot of reference to Joseph and David. Hebrews 2 and 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. That also, in order to be the seed of Abraham, he has to come from a man that comes from the lineage of Abraham. Verse 17, wherefore in all things, because now if he makes Christ a hybrid, then it's not all things. It's only some things. But this says, wherefore in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. So if I'm his brother, then, and I'm to be made, and he wants to be made like me. He can't be born like Superman. He got to be born like me, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted. The only way he could suffer being tempted is if he was made like me. Romans 8 and 3, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. John 7 and 42. You notice I'm in the text. I ain't, maybe he coming in the text in the next round. We'll find out. He, tell, he, he more worried about ISUBK and Commander Jenny Hunter than the debate title. John 7 and 42. Have not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David? They're saying have not the scripture said, what, they didn't have the New Testament, they had the Old Testament. And the Old Testament said of the seed of David, of his loins, of the town of Bethlehem. I'm going to go to the next slide. I might get through all of this. Uh, I'm going to skip this for now in case I got to come back in the rebuttal. I'm going to skip that. I want to I want to skip that. Slot it. Wait, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, yes, no, 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 no. So I want to go to this virgin that he brought up. If y'all can see my screen here, this is the Zondervan Illustrated Bible Dictionary. Let's debunk this virgin is talking about sex at all. Every time you see the word virgin, whether it's Bethula or Bathwala, I'm not a Hebrew expert like that, or Alma or virgin, it's not always talking about sex for either word. So we take the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Let's look at Let's destroy a virgin. This is page 882. The former term is rendered virgin in the standard lexicons, and the translation does seem appropriate in many or even most passages. Moreover, the abstract, but thula, plural form, appears to indicate virginity. In Deuteronomy 22, 14, it means evidences of virginity. But in Ezekiel, there are, however, several considerations that should be kept in mind. A number of passages show that it's not talking about sex. It's rendering just a young woman. That's for a Bethula. That's one. 
Now, if I go to the next one, now this ain't written by me. This is in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. The second Hebrew term, Alma, is clearly the feminine form of H6624, young man. This factor affects our understanding of Alma in the most controversial passage, Isaiah 7 and 14, which traditionally has been translated, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. The NRSV and other modern versions, however, uses young woman in this passage. Some have argued that if Isaiah had intended the meaning, he would have used Bathwala instead. But clearly that argument don't work, as noted above, as too often that meaning has nothing to do with sex. On the other hand, it's a fair argument to say that if Isaiah had wanted to stress the woman's virginity, he had other means to do so. A woman who had not known a man like Genesis 24 and 16. Genesis 24 and 16 says the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin. Neither had any man known her. That's the proof that the word virgin is not talking about sex because it says neither had any man known her. If it was meant if virgin was absolute, they wouldn't have to put that text in there. So even in the Bible dictionary, it tells you that. Just because you see the word virgin more times than not, it's talking about a young woman. And if he's going to use Isaiah 7 and 14, then he must also use Isaiah the eighth chapter when that prophecy was initially fulfilled, because that was also a man and a woman having sex. Can't get around that. I want now I can go back. I got about three more minutes. Now I'm gonna go back to. I'm sorry, bear with me one second. So now in Luke, the first chapter, which is what they usually run to, it says, then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not known a man? And it's the same thing in Luke 1 and 18 when Zacharias said to the angel, whereby shall I know this, for I'm too old a man, and my wife shall be stricken in years. So it's not that Mary is asking a question that's crazy, because Zachariah does it earlier in the chapter. Uh, Sarah did the same thing in Genesis 18 chapter when she hears that she's going to have a child. She says, after I'm old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, also? So the answer says, and the angel said unto her, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Most people think that's when Mary got pregnant, not realizing that's just a message being done. Just like in Genesis 18, the message was being said to Sarah what was going to happen. And then as we read here in Genesis, I'm sorry, in Genesis 21 and 1, the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. It didn't happen yet. I'm going to keep going. So now when you go to verse I'm sorry, when you go to verse 36, it says, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived. Now he's making a comparison between Elizabeth's pregnancy and Mary's coming pregnancy. So if Elizabeth was pregnant from a man and woman having sex, then also Mary is going to be pregnant from a man and woman having sex. And when you go to verse 45 in this same chapter, now uh, for time's sake, it says, and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of the things which were told her from the Lord. That lets you know these things had not happened yet. It's just that simple. One minute left. In Matthews 1 and 18, it says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child. All that's talking about is before they became together publicly, as husband and wife, she was already pregnant because they just had sex before the marriage. It's no different than Luke 1 and 15 when it says that, and this is talking about Elijah, when it says he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from the womb. I'll stop there, but it's going to be on vocab. He has to stay on subject and show that if he's going to go the virgin route, he's going to have to show that prophecy before Second Samuel 7 or either during some time where the prophecy of coming from the seed of a man changed to just a woman being pregnant. Uh, I yield.
All right, that will conclude the first round for Captain Tazariak. I will reset for 10 minutes for Vocab Malone. Make sure you guys are supporting uh, the Brother Garfield podcast um, with likes, subscribes, as well as financial support. Brother Garfield, if you can throw your link in the chat so people can be able to see it. This uh, These finances help support the debaters um, and bring more content to the platform. So make sure y'all supporting the platform. I reset at 10 minutes. Uh, let me look. We got uh, Captain Tazaria screen down. And Vocab Malone, would you be utilizing your screen for the first round? Yeah, if session? you could please share it, yep. <laughs> All right, I'm about to share it right now. All right, the time is set for the 10 minutes. It is on Vocab Malone first round. The time will start when you start. All right, before I get into my reasons, I'll rebut one thing he said. Using the Zonervan Victoria Encyclopedia of the Bible, page 886. I don't know if Tazariak read this part or if it's a different edition, but let me read this to what it says. This is a resource he used to try to disprove what I'm saying tonight. Listen to this carefully. All of the teachings about virginity and the OT are carried over and related to in the NT. The primary discussion of the subject has rested upon the statements concerning Mary in the gospel narratives. It is abundantly clear that the virginity of Mary is taught in Semitic terms in Luke 1 34, since I have no husband. This phrase is nearly identical to that in Genesis 24, 16, the variation being accountable in the shift from third to first person. The Septuagint of that passage reads, a man had not known her. I'm going to go down a little bit more and read about Parthenos, which is the Greek word used there by Matthew and by Luke as well. Listen to this carefully. This is this is Zondervan's Pictorial Encyclopedia of the Bible, 886. At no point in the New Testament is the term Parthenos ever used apart from virgins. The term is used in the masculine plural in Revelation 14.4. Revelation 14.4 is on the screen. Look what it says. It defines virgin from the Bible for you, everyone. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women. Now, we can say that's metaphorical, but it has to relate to something real, and that's what a virgin means. That's what it is. Continuing off my presentation, I want you to look down here at Song of Solomon 6, 8. This shows you were almost clearly used as a virgin, meaning a woman who has not been touched. Yes, she's of marriable age, but that's not all. There are 60 queens and 80 concubines, just talking about Solomon's ladies, and virgins without number. It w This doesn't make sense unless they're ones who have not been titched. Queens, the married, concubines, the sex ladies, virgins without number. They're on deck. That's just one example. So you have to define it by context. This is important. This is why scholars recognize this. I'm going to read this, and I got the, the source listed up there. In its every use in the Hebrew Bible, the word Alma either refers to a virgin or has a neutral sense. And I showed you some of the places on the screen. Based on this study, it appears that Isaiah chose his words based on precision. While the Hebrew Bethula could refer to a virgin of any age, Alma would refer to a virgin that has just arrived at puberty. The main difference there has to do with age. That's the main difference. She is a maiden in the truest and purest sense. So there does not seem to be a cause to abandon the traditional interpretation of Alma as a virgin, except for an anti-supernatural or anti-messianic bias, or if you've been taught by General Yohanna. There's the other examples. You can look these up and you can see how this word is used. Now, going on to point three that defends the virgin birth. If you look, this is a genealogical tree. All these people, 40 times. This is in Matthew chapter 1, 40 times or so. What is Matthew writing? 40 times. He's writing uh, basically fathered. This words it depends on the translation used, but basically fathered. So-and-so fathered so-and-so. So-and-so fathered so-and-so. To Zariak, why does Matthew never say that Joseph fathered Jesus? And it says, it says Joseph, and then it mentions his wife Mary, and it says, of whom was born Jesus. Jesus. He literally abandons the formula. You have to be reading this genealogy with blinders on to not see his deviation from it. You can see right there in Matthew 1, 15 and 16. Elihud was the father of Eliezer, there's the father of Matan, Matan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Why does he deviate? 
Why does he deviate? This is a genealogical avoidance. It's set up by the pattern that the author himself creates. And then shock of whom was born Jesus, because he knows what he's about to show. This is an old copy of Matthew chapter one that you can see on the screen. I'm going to show you verse 16. This is key because it says, from whom, from whom. This shows you why, you, you got to ask yourself, why doesn't, why doesn't Matthew say, and J Jacob, or I'm sorry, Joseph, father, Jesus, when that's what it says every other time. Luke does something similar, genealogical avoidance. This is Luke 3.23, Haz and Amadetzo. What does it say here? Oh, I'm not, I'm not flipping the screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just flip the right screens here. There's that that I just mentioned, and now here we are right here. Why does Luke say, as was supposed? This is in the context of the genealogy. This is how he refers to Jesus. Now, Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of Heli, which is Eli, basically. I hope he doesn't say, because the parentheses tell you that it wasn't originally in there. That's an English grammatical translation choice. It has nothing to do with the Greek. The old one, Westers, would literally say, as was supposed, means it wasn't in there. But you, you can't find any textual variant where that's absent. Luke says, as was thought, as was supposed. That makes no sense if he is the biological father of Jesus. Look at something similar here. Matthew 1, 18, the rest of this, look at this. Now, the birth of Jesus took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before, that's a Greek conjunction, pren, and, and it means before, they came together, and it's not for the wedding or anything he's going to say. If he wants to get in there, I have some resources that are going to talk about the actual cultural practices of the day. He can't just assert that's what it says, because that's not what it says. The resources show you how they did weddings in the first century, and it's not the way UPK tells you. She was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. I've highlighted what it says there in Greek, ek. It means out of. That's literally what it means, ek. Now, it's interesting. If you look at the Greek, it doesn't say child. It says what was in the belly, ek, from, and then it says the Holy Spirit. The genitive is used there. What is the genitive? We'll get into it because it explains everything. There it is in Greek. You can see it. That's the genitive from the Holy Spirit. The genitive denotes possession. And it says Holy Spirit. That's the genitive case in the Greek. Again, on the screen, you can look all these things up, but I have the resources right there so you can see it. Possession. But what? of the Holy Spirit, not of Joseph. You really can't get around it. And related to that is the whole way that Matthew frames this. Look at Matthew 118. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. It can be translated, the origin of Jesus Christ is this way. He's about to tell you what happened. If Tazariak was right, it should say, Joseph and Mary had sex like men and women do and produce Jesus. Instead, he goes into this elaborate dreams and all kinds of other stuff happen. Why? Because it's not what Captain Tazariak says. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Very important to understand. And I want to bring it out that he literally said at one point just now, oh, they had sex before they were married. But yet the scripture says Joseph was a just man. He's not a deadbeat coward. He's not going to abandon her. He's not going to put her ashamed. He's not going to blame it on her. And yet he was considering doing that in Matthew 118. Why? Why? Why would he dissolve the betrothal if he knows he's the father? That would not be the actions of a just man, even considering that. This whole thing makes Joseph not a just man to preserve a bad doctrine. When you look at the very next verse, look at it says, As he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. From the Holy Spirit. And guess what? It uses ek again there. Both in Matthew and both in Luke. There it is. Defined. Look it up. Look at this. A primary preposition denoting origin. The point whence action or emotion proceeds from out of the cause. That's what it says. That's what the angel had to tell Joseph. And since we're talking about 
angels giving people One dreams and left. visions. I want to bring it out to you that according to Yaquab, he received a vision from an angel that told him a lot of the stuff Arya had taught them was wrong. And guess what? One of the things was wrong. Their denial of the virgin birth. But I'm going to trust this vision. I don't know about that vision, but one last thing we're going to get to here is Matthew 1, 24, 25. Both Matthew and Luke show that they knew each other not. Look at this. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded, took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. Tazariach needs to say that, knew her not again. It doesn't say that. And look what Mary says. It backs that up. I know not a man. Luke 134. And you know, it was interesting. Tazariach said, you don't hear a lot about Mary. What are you talking about? Have you not read the beginning of Luke? You don't hear about Joseph, who he goes to visit. Yet you see Mary visiting uh, her family. And you hear her song. What are you talking uh, about? Time, time, time. Make sure y'all supporting the Brother Garfield podcast. Uh, financially, spiritually, mentally. Subscribe to the platform for putting together excellent form of debates. As such, tonight's debate is, is Joseph the biological father of Jesus according to prophecy? Vocab Malone versus Captain Tazariak. We actually got a link at the top of a future debate coming up. I don't know if Garfield wants to speak to that, but we're about to go into the rebuttal round. Um, right. Rebuttal um, round. I'm sorry, brother. October 8th is me versus um, Yawasap. Is there an Israelite presence in Colombia and America? My apologies. I'll, I'll go back on, off mic. All right. No go problem. Ahead. No problem. Shout out to the good brother Garfield and the good brother Yawasap of Ron Vidal Gabarium. That'll be an excellent showdown. Now we'll be moving from the first round into the rebuttal round. The rebuttal rounds are five minutes apiece. Captain Zazariak will be going first for five minutes. I will alarm him at the one minute marker, as well as Vocab will follow up and I will alarm him at the one minute marker. A hey, uh, quick Cap question, will, Corey. Corey uh, for the rebuttal, this so this ain't where I ask some questions. This is where I rebut what he just said. Yes, sir. So you'll be able to rebut uh, whatever he said now or the opening statement. Or whatever he has said in the past, the floor, the floor is yours to do whatever you would like to. Okay, and it's gonna start. Right. Start speaking. Uh, uh, I, I don't. I don't believe I'm sharing my screen, but if I do, I will ask if my time could be paused to do so. But I do not think I'm sharing my screen to rebut him right now. All, all right. right, I just move vocabs, uh, screen. So I'll. Um, I see yours. If you can, can you put your screen up? You said you might. Yeah. Is that? What you're yeah. Yeah, I said so I might. Go, I don't know if I am. So go ahead and add it again. Okay. And then I'll just, just bring case, it up. Got you. Okay, yeah. I got you. I got I'll you. highlight it as soon as you say it to me. save time. I don't want to stop the clock. Got you. So let me share first. Let me just make sure you see my PowerPoint. Do you yeah. see my PowerPoint here? Uh, Yes, I see it. So I'll only tap it uh, if you uh, want to go into okay. it. All right, um, I got the five minutes set for your rebuttal uh, round. The time will start when you start, Cap. I don't know what page he was talking about with the virgin birth. I think it's word virgin. I think he said 886. What I read was 882 and 883 on the word virgin. I also clearly showed in the breakdown of the word virgin that it's not talking about not having sex. And he even proved it himself when he talked about the men in Revelations 14 being virgins and that not talking about sex. Virgin just means young woman as a matter of fact you become a virgin at a certain age luke 2 and 36 anna the prophetess who was married to a husband uh seven years from her virginity meaning when a flower came which is the mark of a young woman seven years from that she got married so i don't know why he keeps focusing on the word virgin this is not a virgin birth debate this is is joseph the seed, excuse me, is Jesus the seed or son of Joseph according to biblical prophecy? And in 15 minutes, we ain't seen one prophecy to counter what I pulled already. And that's what he has to do in this debate. Otherwise, when I, and a lot of the rebuttal I want to save, I want to ask him the questions, which is why I'm, I'm avoiding doing that. So what I will do can I pause real fast? I, or can you pull up my um, screen? I want to show my uh, PowerPoint. 
Uh, if we could pause the time. It's already up now. It's already up now. It's already up there right now? Yeah. Okay, so they could see what I'm showing right now. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. So he made a point to pull out Matthews 22 when Christ asked, uh, who is the Christ? Is he the son of David? As if to say Christ was making that statement to say, I'm not the son of David. Whereas if you read right here, Revelations 22 and 16, Christ says, I am the root and offspring of David. You cannot be an offspring of David unless you come from the seed of David. That's plain. That's what this subject is about. The subject ain't about the lineages. And when we get to this Q&A, I am going to obliterate him. And I'm going to give y'all y'all this information I'm going to bring to y'all. Y'all may not even know. He may not even know. So even when he brought out the public example, Matthew 1 and 19, and Joseph, her husband, not uh, not willing to make her a public example. Look how the language changed. It went from a spouse. I'm sorry, I jumped the damn chat. It went from a spouse to now husband. Even when the, the angel he said, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take Mary thy wife, not Mary for a wife, not to take Mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, meaning what happened between Mary and Joseph, the Lord wanted. The public example was having a child in his father's, excuse me, in the father's house. Ecclesiasticus, the 42nd chapter, will explain that. It says, the father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her taketh away sleep when she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age and being married, lest she should be hated. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. That's the embarrassment that Joseph didn't want to happen because they had not come together as man and woman. He also mentioned, I believe, I think y'all can still see my screen. He also mentioned in Matthews 1, and a lot of people get this wrong, when it says he knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn, this is the conclusion of the whole entire story. The whole into the brought forth is when the sperm cracked the egg and she was pregnant because that is the issue. The issue in Matthew is Joseph being afraid because he got a pregnant. Before One the minute left. Is Joseph being afraid because he got a pregnant before the ceremony and the angel telling it to fear not because the Lord wanted this to happen. That's why it quotes. Matthew, excuse me, Isaiah 7 and 14 in verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. That virgin is saying a young woman shall be with child. Just like in Isaiah, the seventh chapter, a young woman shall be with child. And in Isaiah, the eighth chapter, that young woman was with child from a man and a woman. And just like in Matthews 1, 23 to 25, a young woman was with child between a man and a woman. This is not rocket science. This ain't that hard. He has to address the scriptures that I gave. Maybe he'll do it in the rebuttal. But all he's doing is talking about, he has a weird obsession with ISCBK like I can't understand. He keeps on, he talking about Ari, he talking about Yaiqua giving business. He's doing all that, but ain't bought one prophecy in the Old Testament of a virgin birth without a man, without the seed. So can time. he please, somebody force him, I yield. So I time, 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 time. We are still in the rebuttal round. I see Cappy Clear just uh, share your sharing page. Um, we'll reset the five minute marker. Um, let me get that set for vocab. This will be fi vocab's five minute rebuttal round. And vocab, I will interject at the one minute marker. Make sure y'all are following the Brother Garfield podcast, supporting financially tonight's debate. Is, is Joseph the biological father of Jesus according to prophecy of uh, vocab? Would you be sharing your screen? Yes, but uh, let me. I want to read something first. What do I got? Five minutes? How much is it? Uh, five minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, you know what? For this one, for this one, actually. Psh, well, I'll just be crap. ready. I'll just be ready if you, uh, you know, you want to share the screen. I'll just be ready to click it. Um, and whenever you want me to start the time, I'll start the time once you start speaking. Okay, that works. I appreciate that. Thank you. No, no, no. Uh, I, I may not do it. I may just read some stuff. Okay, uh, I'm ready to start. I want to read something first. This is from Victor, Journey Through the Bible, <clears throat> and this is page 195. They have 
this is a book about customs during Bible times, and there's an entry here, betrothal. And look what it says. When Gabriel appeared to Mary, she was betrothed to Joseph. At this time, betrothal was a serious matter, a legally binding promise to marry. It was essentially marriage without living together. The actual wedding ceremony marked the time when the husband took his wife home with them. There were three ways to become betrothed at this time. One, with a piece of money in the presence of witnesses. Two, with a written contract. Or three, by living together. The third way was not approved of in Jesus' time. A breach of vows during betrothal was considered adultery and was dissolved only by divorce. Now, I can read more on that entry to help Tatariak understand what betrothal is, but what I'm going to do to help him with that is I'm going to go to the Apocrypha. I'm going to show him that he does not understand the difference between a betrothed wife or an espoused wife or husband and someone who is actually consummated. All the indications in the text are that they have not consummated. And it's almost like he doesn't understand the Semitic way to say we had sex because they keep on saying we haven't known each other. That's a Semitic way to say we haven't had sex. Now let's look here at Tobit 378. Although the Apocrypha is not the word of God, what it does is show you the way Jewish people thought and did things. Look at this. On this day it happened. This is verse seven. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read from the screen I got here. Uh, but I, You can leave that up for a second. That's fine. On this day it happened unto Sorry Sarah. About the daughter of Ragel, who was an Ekbatana of media, that she also heard reproaches by one of her father's maidservants. Now listen to this. Because that she had been given to seven demons, and Osmodeus, the evil demon, had slain them before they had been with her as it is appointed for women. And the maidservant said unto her, It is thou that slayest thy husbands behold thou hast already been given to seven husbands and thou hast not been named of one of them notice it calls them this lady's husbands the story is the demons are slaying them but it says you have not been with them that shows to Zariac doesn't even understand his own apocrypha god bless his heart and that's why i keep on bringing up ISUPK, because the reason why Tazariak thinks what he thinks about this subject is not because he's read the Bible. It's because he was taught by people who rejected the virgin birth because they came out of a school that was imitating Judaism, the commandment keepers. Yet they themselves have now denied it. So Tazariak, teacher's teacher, it took him decades to see it, but he went from Luke is a lie to now Luke taught the virgin birth. How many decades will it take to Zariak? Hopefully this debate will speed up the process. The process. Now let's look here at reason seven. Mary is called virgin multiple times by multiple authors. Luke explicitly calls her Parthenos multiple times. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. How many times does he have to call her virgin for Tazariak to understand? Understand, Mary was a virgin. And this does relate to Isaiah 7, 14, not because of the strict Old Testament context, because of the way the New Testament interprets the prophecy. There is double fulfillment, and it's fulfilled in a more literal, excellent way in the birth of Jesus. You know what's interesting about this? What does Isaiah say to Ahaz in the context to Zariach? Do you know? He says, make the sign as high as the sky or way down low. Make it anything. That sign can be anything. And, and to Zariach, wants us to think that the sign is just these these people had sex no it's virgin birth ultimately is the ultimate intention that makes sense of the type of sign isaiah told ahaz to ask for not to zariach's version and it also doesn't make sense of this next thing mary's question and gabriel's answer look at luke 131 behold you will conceive salim say in your womb and bear a son and you shall call his name jesus Notice Joseph ain't mentioned. He will be great and be called the son of the most high, not the son of Joseph. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? Why would she ask that question? And notice the answer isn't you're going to have sex with your husband. It's the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, that's a logical connective. You got to ask what the therefore is there for. When you see it, it means what came before is relevant to the next statement. The child to be born will be called Holy Son of God. He's set apart. He's sanctified. He's different for a special purpose. Tazarek wants you to think he's not set apart because he came about like everybody comes about. In fact, it's even worse. It's them having sex before they're even married. That's, that's holy? That's holy to you? 
This is a tragedy of this denial of the virgin birth of Jesus. Uh, not only does it deny plain scripture, it denies the holiness of Jesus from jump. Time. Tonight's debate is, is Joseph the biological father of Jesus according to prophecy? Make sure y'all following the Brother Garfield podcast. Subscribe to it as well as support. He has the cash app up. That is cash tag ask brother garfield um support the platform and help support the debaters and the edification coming to this platform so make sure y'all try to support as much as possible make sure you following captain cesariak and vocab malone the street apologist on all platforms and we will get their handles towards the end of this debate now we're going into the cross-examination um i love the cross-examination because we're able to see all the edification of both former debaters um, come to a halt and be criticized um, before our faces. Um, I believe Tazariog will be going first in the cross-examination. Now, it will be 10 minutes total, but it will still be five minutes apiece. Um, it will go a round one, round two style. Um, from uh, my understanding, Brother Garfield, you can cut me off at any time, but I think I have the understanding of it. Um, 10 minutes total, Captain Tazariog, you will have five minutes on the scoreboard. One second. Mm -hmm. And then I will let you know uh, when it's one minute left. So how it will go, Captain, is you have 30 seconds to ask a question. Um, vocab, you have 60 seconds to answer said question. Um, and try to come to a halt on your answer as much as possible, as quick as possible, so uh, the debater can actually get um, that next question in because the time will continue to run. So make sure both uh debaters i know y'all kind of ran over a couple of seconds in your rounds no problem but try to come to a halt when i say time so the next question can come through um because we still we're going to keep it going keep it going so um it's 10 minutes total but first um the first part of it five minutes captain zaryak are you ready yeah i'm ready would you be presenting anything at some point um when i not not currently so do you want me to share my screen like you have me do so it's just up there yeah go ahead and get it up there um, okay no problem hold on one second uh, let me come back over here let me present share screen share entire screen boom hey one one second guys this is is this the um the cross examination yes sir yes all right cool so why Okay, so he, all right, no problem. All right. Uh, just a quick question, Brother Garfield. So you're saying 10 minutes total, but it will be a cross-examination, five minutes a piece, correct? Right. That's what, I, that's what I wanted the clarification on. Just to yes. make sure that Captain. both debaters realize it's five minutes each. So one asks question for five minutes, and then the next one, and then you cut. The question has to be up to 30 seconds, and the answer has cut off at 60 seconds. All right? So the uh, person don't go long-winded and try to let the time run out. All right, that's yes, it. You guys will do that. All right, peace. Yes, sir. Um, uh, Captain Cesariak is up, but I won't. Uh, I won't post the link until you let me know. Okay, King. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, dear, so I will have to make sure you about to start, Cap. Yeah. All right, hold on. I want to make sure. I got to make sure both of y'all ready because both of y'all will be participating. So, vocab, you good to go? The mic is good. All right, good deal. So, Cap, uh, the floor is yours. The time will start when you start. That verse in Luke 1 and 34, does it say, I know not a man or I'm a virgin that you just put up there? Luke 1, 34, uh, I know not a man. Okay, because you just lied. You said it says I'm a virgin. That's what you just said. Yeah, in 2 Sam Samuel 7 and 12, when he says, I will raise up seed after thee, can you show anywhere where that prophecy changed in the Bible? Uh, can you repeat that? And by the way, I was quoting from the ESV, which does say, I'm a virgin. I'm not lying. The ESV translates it that way. But what was your question again? That, I'll pause uh, the no. time, Captain Cesariak, so you can reset the question and then uh, it'll yeah, pick up the vocab start to answer. He's probably still obsessed with me. He got to keep up. <laughs> Se Second Samuel 7 and 12. When thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels and will establish his kingdom. Can you show anywhere in the Bible where it changes from the seed of the excuse me, the seed of David to a man being born by God making a woman pregnant? Can you show the change in the Bible? 
Well, there's no change. Man doesn't always know what God intends. An offspring doesn't always literally mean sperm. David didn't impregnate Mary. So it just means legal father when you look at who Jesus is. Thank you for at least being able to tell one truth. In Acts 2, when the Lord said, excuse me, when it says he swore an oath to David that he would not repent from the fruit of his loins, which also lets you know is not spiritual, but literal. Can you again show if the Lord swore, can you show where it changes from that? Yes or no? Yeah, no one thinks it's spiritual. It's legal. Jesus is a legal son of Joseph, not spiritual. So I don't know why you're using that term. I would never use that term. So that's not describing my position. It's not changing. It's showing the true intention that was there all along. That's why I brought out Genesis 3.15 in the beginning. That's why I brought out Isaiah 7. And you have the divine interpretation in Matthew chapter 1. So you can't get around that. The word legal is nowhere in there. That's just your assumption. That's not a question. That's a statement. John 1 and 45. And we Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Is that true or false? True. So is Jesus the physical son of Joseph or legal son of Joseph? Legal son. And by Can the way, the text doesn't say, but John already wrote his prologue, which assumes the virgin conception. John 1 assumes the virgin conception. And verse 13 is a parallel to it. Can you show in the Bible where Joseph is a legal father of Jesus and not the physical father of Jesus? Yeah, in the genealogy of Luke where it says, as was supposed. And that means what? That means people thought he was the physical father like you, but they were wrong. He's the legal father, and that's why he's in the genealogy. Hey, can I share my screen? Can yes. Can pause for a second? I'm not asking yeah. you. <laughs> I'm teasing, man. You know I'm teasing, man. Yeah. Can I share my screen? It's what I'm presenting, life. what I'm presenting right here, is Julius Africanus in the Epistle to the Aristotes. So he said that as was supposed because it wasn't Joseph. That's just what they assumed. But according to Julius Sextus Africanus, he broke down how both the lineage in Mary and excuse me in Matthew and Luke's lineage belong to Joseph by showing how Luke's, the reason why it says as was supposed, this is what it says. Thus, neither of the evangelists is in error as one reckons by nature and the other by law. The as was supposed, according to Julius, is that by law and Matthew, I think believe it's Mathan, was the actual father of Joseph. He's But by legal, because he was doing the law of a brother, Heli is who he raised up Joseph for. So when you say as was supposed, that are just an error, or do you disagree with the church fathers that y'all love so much? I like that. I'm glad you asked that question. It's Boom. true that just like today, there was some debate and discussion, right, about, about well, I, don't, I mean, is that what we're doing? There was some debate and discussion about the One genealogies. Well, there was some debate and discussion about the genealogies. But Tertullian, Ambrose, Jerome, Leo the Great, Justin, and his dialogue with Trifo, Irenaeus, the martyrdom of Isaiah, the gospel of Nativity of Mary, the proto Evangelion of James, Ignatius, and his epistle to the Ephesians, St. John of Damascus, are just an example of some of the early church fathers that you just mentioned, who all understood that Luke was Mary's genealogy. But see, Jesus being the son of David doesn't even depend on that. They could be wrong about that. And Jesus is still the son of David in the way that it matters legally. I want to highlight also in my PowerPoint that y'all can see right here. First, you know, they always agree with the church father. The church father just said it. And Eusebius in Ecclesiastical History, pages 32 and 33, and also page 250, of the ecclesiastical history, Eusebius, who these brother, who these people love, it says another time, epistle of this. Time, 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 time. Mm. We got to move over to the second section of the first part of the cross examination. Uh, I'm gonna kill that screen cap. Uh, let's see, remove that right quick. 
Got to move over to Vocab Malone. The topic tonight, if you guys are just coming in, the numbers are going up. The topic is, is Joseph the biological father of Jesus according to prophecy? That's what the brothers are discussing. All uh, right, now we're in the second section of the first cross-examination. It is on Vocab Malone to ask questions to Captain Cesario. The time is set for five minutes, and I will only interject at one minute unless there's some form of technical or toss-up. Uh, vocab, quick question. Would you be uh, utilizing your screen for it? No. I'm going to destroy my interlocutor face-to-face -face here. I don't want the screen getting right. in the way. All right. Good deal. So, um, Cap, are you ready? Your mic is good? Yeah, and I have 60 seconds to each question, right? Just Yeah, 60 seconds to answer. And vocab, you got 30 seconds to ask the question. Uh, I'll be kind of lenient on a second here or two, but uh, try right. to stick as close as possible. I don't want to interrupt y'all, so try to stick as close as possible. Uh, the time is on you, vocab, when you would like to start. Excellent. Tazariak, did Adam have a biological father? Yes. Who is his biological father? It doesn't say. So how do you know he had one? Because he says, for this cause, man shall leave uh, mother and father and cleave unto his wife. He had knowledge of mother and father. That's why he made the statement. Adam so why did always... Luke give? Oh, go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm done. Why does Luke give tit the title to Adam, the son of God, then? Because Adam is the one that the Lord started with before the flood, just like Abraham is the one that he started with after the flood. So who's the first man if it's not Adam? There's no record of a first man. Okay. Interesting answers. Uh, how do you interpret Genesis 3.15, Zerah, her seed? In Genesis 3 and 15, when it says his seed and her seed, is just saying his child and her child. It still would involve two people having and being at odds with each other from the gate. So he's saying the serpent seed and her seed because she carries seed and gives birth. You can find that in Genesis, the 19th chapter, when uh, a, a lot daughters got him drunk why because they said to preserve seed of their father who is the serpent seed to Zariak? when the serpent seed of genesis 315 who who is it that, that would be you <laughs> you you know my genealogy by looking at me no, i'm just hey that's just what i'm going with that yeah, would be I got you. You. you you know i knew you're gonna answer that but i want to have some fun here okay <laughs> Let's look at the Septuagint translation of Isaiah 714. Why did the translators use the word Parthenos for Alma? Because the, as I broke down, um, what they all knew was that the word virgin just means young woman. It's not meaning that a person, a woman that's never had sex, even if a woman, if a young woman, let's say an 18, 20 year old woman who would still be a young woman had sex. She doesn't stop being a virgin just because she had sex. She's still a young woman. Not being a young woman comes with age, not with your sexual activity. So you can still be a virgin after you had sex? Why couldn't you be? You can't I ask think... questions, but it, what's the answer to that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, you can. I apologize. Yes. All right. Interesting. How can Christ avoid the curse of Jeconiah in Jeremiah 2230 if he's physically descended from David? That's a good question. When you go to Psalms, the 89th chapter, it'll tell you that even if the Israel, excuse me, if the tribe, if the seed of David fails, if they redeem themselves, they can still be the seed. That's why you'll find Jeconias and Salathiel in Matthew's lineage and Luke's lineage. The point wasn't about Jeconiah is not in Luke's lineage. That's incorrect. It might no, be so on. one second, one second. Uh, I'll pause the time right quick. If you can, vocab, just give him the uh space to finish his answer. Oh, okay, I'm trying to help him out. He's about to make a, a massive mistake, no, but go ahead. No, no problem, no problem. Hey, Cap, you uh, you still good? You still time is still yours. I we'll start back it. when you start. No problem. I could have misspoke with uh, Jack and I, that's fine. But Salathio, people that are in the lineage are still there, so that has nothing to the curse that y'all call a curse is actually not a curse. Because in both Matthew and Luke's lineage, they contain individuals that would be connected to him, and he's still the king. When you read Psalms, the 89th chapter, I was trying to find it for you um, while I was moving around. But when you read that, it'll tell you if they fit. I'm sorry, was that my 60 seconds? 
No, you still you still good. You still good. Oh, no, sweat. I apologize. No, I thought I heard you talk. I apologize. You'll see where the seed of David can be evil, which we see evidence of that. But when they correct themselves, they can still reign on the throne because he established that promise to them forever. There is no breaking of that. There is no uh, Acts. The second chapter says he swore to them. If I could read it, Psalms 89 and 34, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David, his seed shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me. Next oh, you got to bounce the back, yeah. Yeah, I see more than 60 seconds. Jeremiah twenty two thirty is a curse. It says, write this man down as childless, a man who shall not succeed in his days. None of his offspring shall succeed in sitting on the throne of David and ruling again in Judah. Now, I have a question. Who is Joseph's father, Tazariak? Who's Joseph's Roman, father? Roman. So, if um, as I was breaking down with your church fathers, your church fathers say that Jacob um, begat Joseph. And then in Luke, one, I'm showing you Luke three, it says he lied. And I broke down your church fathers um, say that Matthew contains the physical father of Joseph. Luke, the third chapter contains the by law, the father of Joseph, according to your church fathers. Yes. Who was Mary's father? Since Mary had no other brothers, that's why he's put in the genealogy. Your position would entail contradiction in the genealogies. Now, no. going on to the next question. Arya taught Yohanna to deny the virgin birth. Yohanna taught you. Uh, now, Arya goes uh, against his own teaching. Why don't you look follow at him? God? Uh, look at God. Uh, He's saying time. Look at God. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no problem. No <laughs> yeah, problem. yeah. No problem. <laughs> Someone <laughs> said, you get saved by the bell. Thank God. No, you got saved. <laughs> Uh, hey, Corey, Corey, oh, if, I, if, I, if I may real quick, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, we need someone, and I forgot this. My apologies, man. I don't know if my brother Philip in the chat could write down the questions. We need five questions from the audience after the second cross-examination. So we got to figure that out. I think we, we messed up on that part. I, I apologize to Tazaria and Vocab. But as far as recording the questions, my brother Philip is in the audience. I don't know if you could, if you have a question in the audience, just state the question and I'll have my brother Philip or sister Mika write the question down and send it to me in my inbox and Facebook. And then I'll just read it out or I'll just, I'll just text it to Corey. All right. So the audience, the five, we need five questions from the audience after the second cross-examination. So I'm going to be um, focusing on that right now. Oh, well, not uh, well, I'm talking, brother, um, brother. Um, go ahead, my brother. Yeah, I just want to say this right quick. Um, when you say five questions, is it five questions for vocab and five questions for cap, or is it five universal questions for both? Five, five. What, 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 what did you mean, vocab? Five universal, right? Well, five universal questions. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. is fine with me. Yeah, five universal questions that would apply to both. Um. Uh, Hold on, let me find Philip in the chat real quick. Um, Mika, <clears throat> Mika says super chat it. Yeah, maybe that's the best way to do it. Super chat your question, and um, we'll have the question read. But it has to be a question that applies to both, both Tazariak and um, Vocab Malone. All right, I'm mute up. And Peace. and just because it's a super chat, it still has to be an intelligible question, um, just to make sure that the uh, form of debate stays on the level is already on. Uh, Cap. We will be setting the uh, second cross-examination up. You will still be going first. Vocab will go after. But, Cap, uh, would you be utilizing your screen? Um, Yeah, let me just present. Just uh, And I'll just use it for my first initial question so I can get it out the way. Um, okay. So that way I don't have to pause it in the middle. So let me share. Okay. So just, you know, just share it up there. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll tap it once we get started. Make sure y'all following the Brother Garfield. A podcast. Make sure you are cash happy mm -hmm. supporting a brother at cash tag as brother Garfield that supports the former debaters as well as the platform for bringing edification out. 
So make sure y'all subscribe here. We'll be addressing Vocab Malone, the street apologist, as well as Captain Zazariak's handles towards the end and any uh, information and merch they would like to present uh, towards the end for everybody to gather. Make sure you're sharing the space as well because this is an exciting, uh, edifying, uh, and fiery uh, debate. We'll be bouncing it over to Captain Cesariog, resetting at five minutes. Um, I'm trying my best in these sections to not interrupt you guys in the midst of a question or interrupt y'all in the midst of a Bible verse being read. So I might be lenient, swaying a couple seconds here and there, but I try to make it up on the back end just to let you guys know I'm trying to be as fair as possible but just to let a Bible verse come cleanly out and then I'll try to bounce it over to the uh, other uh, gentleman. Other than that, Cap, I'm about to click your screen and get it up there. Uh, five minutes is set. Uh, Cap and vocab, are y'all mics good? Yes, my mic is good. Yeah. All right, good deal. So, Cap, I'm about to highlight your screen. And the time will start when you start. I read already Julius Africanus, the epistle to Aristides, where he established that Matthew was by uh, physical, Luke by law, which is echoed by Eusebius, another church father that they love. In Ecclesiastical History, page 250, another epistle of the same Africanus addressed uh, on the supposed discrepancy between Matthew and Luke. So both Sextus and Eusebius attribute both lineages to Joseph. Do you agree with that? Yes or no? It's possible, but no. So are you saying that because you made in your last round, you said that one was Mary's, I believe, Luke, the third chapter. Do you have any proof within the Bible that that's Mary's lineage? Book yes. Chapter Otherwise, Book chapter you have a contradiction with who the father is. Is Heli is Mary's father, and then Joseph is listed, as would be done if there's no older son. You avoid the contradiction. You also do not have the man mentioned in Matthew 111. The man who was I'll, cursed is absent from hers. Very important to understand that. So I'll, there's there's some evidence right there. I will repeat the question. Can you show book, chapter, verse, everything that you just said as far as this lineage belonging to Mary's in the Bible? You just gave conjecture. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're saying that, then neither genealogy says something exactly like that. That's not that's not how it works. You you look at the textual clues and hints and Luke focuses specifically on Mary. It's got her song. It's got her visiting her family. The beginning of the book is all about Mary and the genealogy is not identical to the one in Matthew. And it's interesting. Now you're OK with the idea of a legal genealogy all of a sudden. And I just want to remind you, Eusebius and Julius Africanus both affirmed the virgin birth. I don't know what's going on here with you trying to use cherry pick these sources, but that's the reason why I say that. But remember, I mentioned to Zariak, even if that was incorrect and both in some way were Joseph's, you still got what you need because Jesus is still a descendant of David legally via Joseph. And there's precedent for that kind of thing in Scripture itself. What is the precedent for that kind of thing in the scripture itself? Leveret marriage, adoption, and the kinsman redeemer custom. Those three things. There's and which not one? Do, be, go ahead. And which one do you pick? Well, all three of those, so that you can no. have a descendant who is not biologically yours still be the heir. And they also show that a man can reckon another man as his son or vice versa. That's what they show. You're not going to have case law in Leviticus about what to do with virgin births because that kind of thing wasn't going on until Jesus's day once. So you're not going to have that case law. You're going to have parallels where what I'm saying makes sense in the Semitic context, not in a one West context though. I need you to be a little bit more solid. I asked you, which one of those three do you pick? You said leverage marriage, spiritual, which one? It can only be one. It can't be all of them. So I, I never said anything about spiritual to Zaryak. The you point is, which one? Can, all I'm asking you. None you of those are what happened. It was a virgin birth. The point is, there's precedent for having someone who is a son, not biologically, but be reckoned as a son legally. So it's I want mind blowing to me that you don't understand that. I, just, I want the record to show he first said it was, and then said none of it happened. None Incorrect. of that was you. 
I'm I'm not asking a question. You ain't got to talk. Well, dude, you're just, lying on me though. He just he just said I asked him to pick one. He said none of them because it was a virgin birth. That's what he just said. So now you brought up the curse of Jeconiah, Jeremiah 33 and 20. Thus saith the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and there should not be day nor night in the season, then my covenant with David, my servant, that he should not have a son reign upon his throne. So is that, true, is that true or false? Yes or no? That's true. Thank you. In Luke, the second chapter, when Mary came to Christ, Mary and Joseph came to Christ and said, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said, I must be about my father's business. Why didn't they understand what he spoke to them? I've heard you ask this in other debates, and it fascinates me. Jesus' whole ministry is filled with people not understanding exactly what he's saying or doing. Mm. He's 12 years old, breaking mm. out in the beginning here, right? Mm. I don't know about I don't know about that. Well, I'm not I'm not doing that to you because I'm in the middle of my joint. You know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta let him rock out. Eating some soup, but that's 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 an in injection into my time. All yeah, right. You gotta you gotta let him rock out, Cap. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah. Eat the soup and mute. So when you look at what happened there, it's very fascinating that he says, my father's house. In the text that you brought me to, you walked yourself into a body bag, as you like to say, because he says, my father's house, indicating distinctiveness from Joseph. And notice they didn't deny it. That's what you need. What are you talking about? Your father's right here. Uh, Your father's right here. They ain't saying time, that. Time, time, mm. time, time. Mm. Make sure y'all are supporting the Brother Garfield podcast. Subscribe, like. The debate is getting fiery. We like it going in the order that it's going in. Make sure y'all cash out uh, the cash tag. Ask Brother Garfield for your support to the platform. Um, we got some questions we need to derive from the audience. Five solid questions. Make sure it's intelligible and send it through the super chat. And we will select those five questions and make sure it's a, a unified question that both uh, debaters can um, give an answer to. Uh, we'll be bouncing over to the second section of the second cross-examination. Uh, make sure all the phones are on vibrate while we are live. Um, so right now it will be on vocab Malone to ask the questions, and then it will bounce over to Captain Tazariak to answer vocab. You got roughly 30 seconds on your question. Cap, you got roughly 60 seconds on your answer. I'll try my best not to interrupt um, in the middle of a verse or something like that. And if I do extend it out, then I'll give a couple of seconds on the back end for the uh, other debater to actually answer that question. Uh, Vocal, would you be utilizing your screen? No. Thank you, though. Right, good deal. Um, so we got the screens down. The time is reset at five minutes, and I will be calling it at the one minute marker uh, to let you guys know y'all are getting close. Uh, Cap and vocab, y'all mics good? Yes, yes indeed. All right, Tom, we'll start when you start vocab. Tazariak, where's your verse that says Joseph knew Mary? Uh, Matthew 1 and 25. Can you read that? Yes, I can. Matthew 1 and 25, and knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus or Yahweh Shai. Okay. Where does that say Matthew, uh, where does Matthew say that Joseph knew Mary? Matthew 1 and 25. Could you read that again? A little and louder? Knew, and, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. So I ask you to to show me a place that says Joseph knew Mary and you took me to a place that said he knew her not. So now I'll explain. The thank you. Her, thank you. The knew her no, not. no, I, I didn't. I'm not asking a question there. I'm, I'm, I'm moving off from there. Oh, okay, so what evidence do you have that Joseph knew Mary prior to the birth of Jesus then? There is no verse that says that Joseph knew Mary mm. prior to the birth of Jesus because the first time they had intercourse, Jesus was born. Hence, Matthews 1 and 25, which is the conclusion of the matter, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. Mm. Matthew, I'm not finished. Mm. Matthews 1 and 18, 
Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. The before they came together is not talking about sex, it's talking about the ceremony of marriage. Simple. What's your evidence for that? I just read it. All right. So mm. if, that's a, if that's a case in Luke 2, 7, it says she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Why does Luke say her firstborn son and not their firstborn son in the context where he says them in regards to not being any room for them in the end? Why does he say that? Tan Huan Atus Tan Proto Takan. Her. What? Pro I don't know. What, I don't know what that is you just said. But it can say her firstborn, his firstborn. It can say whatever it wants. It still takes two people to bring forth a child. You want if you want a grammar class, we can have a grammar class. But saying she brought her firstborn son because it is her son. Just like John 1 and 45 said, the son of Joseph. It doesn't make mention of Mary, but is that not Mary's son? That don't make no sense. That's a retarded question. <laughs> I like it. Mm. Let's do let's do a grammar class then. In Romans 1 3, mm. Paul uses a verb that means to become rather than be born. Genome instead of genao. In Galatians 4 4, Paul uses the same verb, this time inflected as genomenon, which means coming from a woman. Yet he describes Ishmael in the same passage, Galatians 4, as Gaginadha, which is from Ganao. Mm -hmm which is the regular way to describe being born. And in Philippians 2.7, he uses that same verb, ganamonai, instead of ganao, because that tends to associate to time? husband. Why? Can you, can you pause his time? I don't Why, know what's going what, on. I don't know what word you're talking about. You know how many words is in Romans 1 and 3? I don't know what you didn't say in Romans oh, okay. 1 and 3. I don't know what word you're talking about. The, the word that's translated sometimes is descended. Can you tell me what word in Romans 1 and 3 you're talking about? Yeah, it's translated as seed or descended. So you talk about the word seed. But I'm but I'm talking about that's 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 my point though. Do you no, have, I just want to make I, do, I want to look in the blue letter follow. Bible to show you what word it is. Listen, what it says is genomine. Huh? The only reason I'm asking is so that when you go to these different verses, I can look for the same word. That's all I'm asking. You just didn't yeah, say yeah. what word. So you talk about the word seed or sperma. Well, so no, so the sperm is not in. So no, where so where it says descended from spermatos, I'm where? talking about the word that's sometimes translated descended. I don't know what it says in the KJV, but here we'll look it up in the KJV. Hey, hey, hey Corey, just keep his time pause because I don't want his question in, right, and okay. I don't want your question to not be answered. When I read Romans one and three, it says concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. I don't know what version you're reading. But I need to go to the correct word because when I go to the what I thought you said was seed, that word is sperma from what I'm reading. So if it's a different word, you have to tell me what word so I can properly answer your question. You're right. I like that. Dom, thank you for I clarifying. Know you do. I know you do. That's know that's you good. Do. Well, that's Look, good. I, I pause your time and everything because you need as much help as you can get. Well, I appreciate that. that. Now, to be fair to myself, I thought you would be up on game and know which word I was talking about. It's made. I didn't say spermatos, so I'm clearly not talking about Actually, that. It's made. Word. Well, you it's never made said, in English, I, translated KJV, which was made. That's I got the word you, I'm asking for the about. record. For the record, when I said seed, you said yes, and then you changed your mind. That's why no, no. when you ask, when you ask who was the seed in Genesis three and fifteen, and I said you, you proving it right now. Let's that's get it that's zero. No. Let's it's it part of that phrase. It's part of that it's, phrase because it's made of the seed. But I said in my question, I said made. I'm good now. I got, I got the right word. Corey, you got it. Let's get back on point because we got it. We got. We stopped the clock and everything for this. So, so re, to re, re ask it again in Romans one three, why does he say made of the seed? Made of the seed, and that word that he uses underlying in the Greek, which is what I was drawing out, is not the normal word for born, and that's why the KJV translators translated as made. That's an irregular use of that verb. Why does Paul do that? And in Galatians 4 and in Philippians 2. He does it three times. Why? Thank you. Now that, that you got the correct word. Well, y'all get caught up in this grammar class. Made of the seed of David according to the flesh is how you should properly read it. And once you read it, 
you know that he's saying made of the seed of David according to the flesh because that was the prophecy, which is the subject. The subject is that Christ would be of the seed of David from the loins of David, from the oath that he would not break. That I read in Acts 2 and 31. One minute left. Acts 2 and 30. Therefore, being a prophet and the Lord has sworn an oath to him from the fruit of his loins. So even when you read Galatians 4 and 4, made of a woman, all of us are made of women, which I already demonstrated in the first round when Christ spoke about John. He said, among them that be born of women. There is no difference here. All right. The Bible records multiple miraculous births. Abraham's wife gave birth to Isaac. Isaac's wife gave birth to Jacob and Esau. All these are miraculous uh, in different ways. Samson, of course, another another example. Uh, Samuel, you know, his mother was barren. Elizabeth, John the Baptist. Why doesn't Jesus, the Messiah, get a miraculous birth, according to Tazariach? Why is he left out of having a miraculous birth? It's just two people having sex. One second. All one second, all one second people... before you answer. That's time, but I'm going to ask vocab and cap. Would you like this question answered? Yeah, I, I'll answer it if you don't mind, vocab. Vocab? Yeah. All right, cap, you got the floor. You Thank answer. you. Every last one of the miracles you mentioned, I would not have because all of them required a man and woman having sex. All of them. Abraham and Sarah had sex. Samson's parents had sex. Isaac and Rebecca had sex and Mary and Joseph had sex body bag. <laughs> All right. That will, Why do you even ask that? Why do you ask that question? Why do you ask that? that, that will, well, that, cause you that, left that, Jesus that. out of the, he, Jesus doesn't get a miraculous birth. According to you. That's the whole point. He's just two people with nothing miraculous about the Messiah being born. It's just regular old day in Jerusalem. Well, Nazareth. Make sure y'all are supporting the Brother Gar Garfield podcast. <laughs> Brother Garfield, how many questions do you I think we got, we got, I think we may have a lot of questions. I gotta, I gotta figure out which ones. We need um, five clean, unified questions that can be asked to both parties. We don't need them all. All right. Excellent all right. job done by uh, both debaters in terms of the uh, former debate back and forth. Um, I think there was an excellent level of decorum for Captain Tazariak as well as Vocab Malone. Um, and now we'll be moving into the section where the audience think, will be asking questions. Question. Yeah, I don't think we have five completely, but let's do this one first. And this one I'm going to put on the screen. What is the definite... You want me to read it, bro, or you got it? You got it? I'll read it. I'll read it, but let's start with Cap will be uh, answering first. How long do they have? Do they have 60 seconds 60 to answer? Seconds, 60 seconds. 30 seconds. 60 All right. seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, no problem. So the question is um, for you, Captain Cesario, first and foremost, what is the definition of the word born in Matthew 1 and 16? Uh, if I look it up, um, it says G1080 uh, to procreate properly of the father, but by extension of the mother, figuratively. To regenerate, bear, beget, be born, bring forth, conceive, he delivered of gender, make spring. All right. You had 60 seconds to answer that question. You conclude. I will bounce it over to Vocab Malone. Vocab Malone, the same question. What is the definition of the word born in Matthew 1 16? It's just uh, begat, basically. I mean, uh, uh, the, the Greek word is ganao, ganao. And it could also be uh, sometimes defined as two mother. All right. Good deal. Uh, what's that second question, Brother Garfield? Do we have a second question from that? And make sure when y'all sending these questions in, it, it kind of has a point connected to it. Yeah, I um, think this both of them could answer this one. The, the questions aren't great. I mean, thank you for the right. questions, but they're not, I got to make it universal. So this one is, I think both yeah. of them could answer this one. Yeah, um, they, they, yeah, so far, yeah. Uh, so Cap, you will be answering the question. Uh, first and foremost, did Joseph and Mary have sex before marriage? You have 60 uh, seconds to answer that. My position is always that sex is the consummation of marriage, whether you have a ceremony or not. So, Matthews 1 and 
17, I be, 1 and 18, I'm sorry, that's them having sex before the ceremony of marriage. But whether you have the ceremony or not, if you lay with a woman in the Bible, that is your wife. You can see instances of that with Jacob, with his two, which can be with his three wives. The only one he had a ceremony for was uh, Rachel, but he got Leah first, no ceremony, and then Bilhah and Zilpah, no ceremony. But they was his wives, wives rather, once he laid down with them. A you? All right, good All right. deal. And same question to vocab malone did joseph and mary have sex before marriage with all due respect that was a horrible answer look at what it says in matthew 118 now the birth of jesus christ took place in this way so it's letting you know how he was born what happened it should say joseph and mary got it on it doesn't say that look what it says when his mother mary had been betrothed to joseph betrothed is a legal pledge to be married they're not living together yet so they're not doing that before they came together, Prin, before they came together, she was found to be with child. So she's already got a child, yet they haven't been together. And then it tells you the source of the child. I brought this out in my opening statements, or the second one, Ek, from the Holy Spirit. It tells you the source. It's right there. It's, it's clear as day, Ek, from the Holy Spirit. So that's, a, that's an ins it's bonkers that you would go there to try to prove it. But I mean, I guess you don't have a lot of recourse because the Bible tells you again and again, she's a virgin that they did not know each other sexually. In Matthew 1, 24 and 25 and Luke 1, 34. So I guess you've got to go to places like this. But it just shows that, yes, you're intelligent and articulate, but you're not a serious student of the Bible. You're repeating what you've heard by tradition. Time, time, time. Uh, can we get another question up there, Brother Garfield? First question, I believe, came from D1JA. Second question came from Tony. Third question will be coming from Lou. Let me read this first. Okay. All right. So I read it. All right, Cap. So you'll be reading this, uh, answering this question first. Um, and I'll address these questions towards the end. Uh, Captain Cesario. So the question says, did, so did Joe... So did God ordain Joseph's sperm in order for the right sperm to hit the egg? Proverbs 26 and 4 says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Shalom. All right. Now let me bounce it over to Vocab Malone. So did God ordain Joseph's sperm in order for the right sperm to hit the egg? Uh, of course, the Bible says that the power of the Most High will overshadow you. It shows you how this happened. And you know what's interesting about this question about his answer in this whole situation is his underlying beliefs. This man's teacher, and therefore him as well, has to believe that Masha is King David. What's interesting about that is David, of course, fathered Solomon. This same man believes that Solomon is actually Jesus reincarnated. I'm sorry that Jesus is Solomon reincarnated. So Masha, in a weird, strange way, is actually one of the ancestors of Jesus. Because Masha is David, and then Jesus is Solomon. That's how bizarre these beliefs are when you deny the virgin birth. We're talking about basic things, but there's a lot of other weird stuff happening in the background, such as King David being Masha, being an ancestor to Jesus Christ because he's supposed to be Solomon. Great question, Lou. Y'all see why I read that scripture? <laughs> yeah, to make your audience there cheer for you. That's why. All right. I just want to be honest. Um, I just want to say it clearly. These questions are weak. Um, and I don't think they're fully helping both debaters. So I'll ask the next question. And I'll just do it because it's up there. I wanted to make sure that these questions have some form of intelligence to it. Uh, this is from Joseph Roberts. It says to both on the program, what makes a child a bastard child? Biblically, biblically speaking, I believe it's a child of incest. Um, that what makes a child a bastard child. I know we believe that a child born out of wedlock in today's time, we believe that that's a bastard, but biblically speaking, I believe um, it's a child born out of incest. 
All right. Uh, Vocab Malone, same question. What makes a child a bastard child? It's a child born where the parents aren't married. Told you, told you. And that's, that's brought out in Deuteronomy. Most likely uh, Deuteronomy 23.2. No one born of a forbidden union may enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation, none of his descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord. Mamsers are not allowed to be in there. So maybe another way to say is illegitimate children. And uh, this is in Deuteronomy 23, 2. And in the New Testament, it appears in Hebrews 12, 8. No, Thorai, if you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. All right, good deal. Um, Brother Garfield, do you have a fifth question? Let me read it first. And I'll restyle the question a little bit to make it make sense. Um, and I'll start off you with scrap, scrap this one. Scrap this one. I think I got I could, I could, I could, I can. I mean, I'm okay with it. They paid a super chat. No, let's, let's, let's do this one as the last one. Philip Bain, $5. And this would be the fifth question. All right. It says, uh, please and explain. Reason, and hold on, hold on, Corey. The reason why I did that, this is more of a universal question that could address to cap and to vocab. Not that I have a problem with David addressing yeah. vocab. But yeah. okay, we, we can do both. I'm okay with it. Okay, well, if you guys don't want to, that's, uh, that's up to you. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm if willing. cap is willing to do an extra one, we'll do that one. That's fine. But this one is a um, more universal question. But go ahead. All right. This one says, please explain Adam had a father, quote unquote. In light of 1 Corinthians 15, 45, the first man, Adam, quote unquote, and 1 Timothy 2, 13, for Adam was first formed. Okay, so, on, yeah. got you. The, the other one was Timothy's what? Uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 13. 2 and 13. So I'm just highlighting them both. So in 1 Timothy, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15 and 45, it says, and so it was written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. If we was to take it literal, then that would have to be a literal man named Adam that was the last man, which it wasn't. It's letting you know that it's spiritual because you're going to, if I say is the last Adam, that means there was no more Adams after Christ. You're going to say no, because that's not the point that it's making. And that's not the point that it's making when it says the first man, Adam, the first man, Adam being a living soul is the first man that the Lord gave his spirit to that he gave the breath of life to, that he gave instructions on how to live and conduct himself. And then once he got it, it was his job to make sure everybody else got it. So when it says for Adam was first formed, Adam was first formed in the truth and time. Eve came right after. Time, time, time. All right, we'll bounce that same question over to Vocab Malone. This will be the last question from the audience. Please explain Adam had a father, quote unquote, in light of 1 Corinthians 15, 45, the first man, Adam, quote unquote, and 1 Timothy 2 and 13, for Adam was first born. Yeah, Desario just did an Edward Scissor's hands to that text. Here's what it says. The first man, Adam, showing he's first, and that's important because he had neither father or mother. So there's a precedent again, and notice his title in Luke is Son of God. First man, Adam, became a living being. And by the way, that's why Eve is described as a mother of all living. So his whole presuppositional background of Genesis makes no sense. At last, Adam became a life-giving life spirit. So notice he's a life-giving spirit. That means he's going to reproduce himself spiritually, the last Adam, who is Jesus. And this only makes sense if Adam's a first man, because the last Adam produces a new kind of human, just like Adam produced one. And Romans 5 shows he produced everybody in sin. Jesus is producing a new kind. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. By the way, that even shows an awareness of the virgin birth. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as in the man of heaven, so also are those of heaven. Saying, like produces like. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. And 1 Timothy 2.15, that's a great passage. It says, she will be saved through childbearing uh -huh. if they continue in faith and love and uh -huh. holiness with self-control. That fulfills Genesis 3.15, by the way. Time. Make sure y'all following the Brother Garfield podcast. Subscribe to the platform for putting together an excellent form of debate tonight. 
Um, if I you got, can, I got you... one more question. Um, this gentleman should have been number five, but I'm not. If you guys want to do two more, we got two more questions. If you, it's up to you guys. It's up to it's up to Cap and um, Bocap. All right. Okay. So you, what are, what are you saying, Brother Garfield? Did I miscount? No, no, no. It's fine. That's already five. But if they want to do, we had two more two more um super chats. If you guys want to do another two questions, it's up to Captain though. It's up to Captain and Vocab. They gotta agree on that. I'm, yeah. I'm down to do more. I want to give the people their uh, super chats worth. I guess, right? Yeah. Cap. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't care. I'll take two more if that's what you got. All right, good deal. So we got it. Uh, we got two more questions coming. This one is from Godal. In the original fulfillment of Isaiah seven and fourteen, <laughs> did that woman have sex, or was it a virgin birth <clears throat> original fulfillment only uh cap question is yours mm. shout out to good i should have known he was going to be in this room um and in, in the original fulfillment of isaiah 7 and 14 that woman did have sex with a man and brought forth a child to answer the question and just for the record i read already in my powerpoint that that word virgin in that text is not to be rendered had about sex at all. It's just talking about a young woman. I already demonstrated that in this debate. All right. Uh, Cap concludes the rest of his time. We'll bounce it over to vocab Malone. Same question. In the original fulfillment of Isaiah 7 and 14, did that woman have sex or was it a virgin birth, quote unquote, Original fulfillment only. No, that woman definitely had sex. She was almost certainly Isaiah's wife. Notice when I first brought up Isaiah 7, I don't know if people caught it, but I said it was fulfilled during that time. And I spoke of what's called dual fulfillment or double fulfillment. So she certainly did. And that's the beauty of the word Alma. It can mean just young handmaiden, but it also can be virgin. And that's why it's very contextual. And so what we see is the ultimate fulfillment is listed in matthew 1 23 but that original fulfillment is right there in isaiah chapter 8 it's almost certainly uh isaiah's wife's uh the the child that they had together and the point was this child and it's sort of an age marker for the king to know these certain things will happen within this time frame and by that time these nations that are vexing you are no longer going to be around so it has to be as a sign in, in its initial context so christians shouldn't try to get away from that we don't want to we're just following matthew's lead understanding how to fulfilled in a more excellent way and that's why the term there plerimo fulfill is to be filled up that's what it means. And so it's fulfilled in a more excellent way, a more literal way, I might add, in the birth of Jesus. All right. That'll be your time. Brother Garfield, do we have another question? Yeah, this is going to be the – well, this is the last one unless um, somebody else does. But um, um, before we even – I mean, this is the last one. Then go to Captain, then then um, Vocab. I mean, that, that would be the question for the night. All right, so the question is kind of slighted towards vocab, so I'll rephrase it a little bit. This is from Daweed. Um, it's saying it's pretty much saying, did the most high commit adultery? Yes or no? Are you saying for me to go first or him to go first? Uh for Cap. Oh, I thought it said for vocab. He's saying well, he's gonna ask both it, of us. It I has think. to be you know, it has to be universal. Um, so I just oh. I'm trying to rephrase it because oh, it, okay. the, the individual also has his opinion in the question. So I'm trying to take away his opinion and take I away the first you. part of it. So the I would the only thing I can make sense of it is did the most high God commit adultery in this matter of the virgin gotcha. earth? My answer would be no, because the most high would never do that to a brother make a man claim something that ain't his he hate that so no that was joseph's uh son so my answer would be no he wouldn't do that all right and we'll bounce it over to vocab um and i'll just read it kind of how he got it for vocab so are you saying that the most high committed adultery yes or no this man just said the most high would never make a man claim a son that wasn't his it's almost like he forgot the account of Onan written in the Bible, where that's literally what was commanded, and he didn't do it, and he was killed for it. What are we talking about here? Or Judah and Tamar. What are we talking about here? Now, in regards to this 
question right here. Does he know that that was sex? Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought I was away from the mic. I apologize. You got to talk to the so, ATL guys uh, afterwards you got, in the club. You got it. So, you got about, uh, I kept the time running, so you got about 10 more seconds. You're good. So the answer is no, uh, that's not what's going on. But I want to read Luke 135. That answers the question. Angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So we've got the Holy Spirit and the power of the Most High. Father God will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Jesus, this verse is Trinitarian in its essence. All three persons mentioned. All I got to do is just catch it. Holy Spirit, Most High, Son of God. And what's it say? Overshadow you. And then there's that connector. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. It tells you right there. It should say, according to this other view, uh, you're going to have sex with your husband. Therefore, the child will be called uh, born out of wedlock, uh, the son of Joseph. But it doesn't say anything like that. Tom, make sure y'all are supporting the Brother Garfield podcast. Excellent formal debate tonight. Throw in the chat who you feel won. Uh, was it close? Put all your comments in the chat right now, Brother Garfield. Uh, definitely appreciate you having me uh, on the platform. And I want to roll over to uh, the closing statements for each combatant tonight. Uh, we will actually start off with Vocab Malone. And then it will roll over to Captain Cesari. Our brother Garfield, the time frame I have down for the closing statements is two and a half minutes each debater. Uh, is it two and a half minutes? No, or is it it's, five actually, minutes it's, it's, five, it's five minutes each. But the way how it was written is just the two under five is too close. Yeah, but before they do the closeout, let me just say, everybody, thank you for supporting the channel. And thank you for supporting this debate. I want to say to the two debaters, this was an excellent debate, well-spirited. I mean, you guys did very well. I learned a lot. And um, vocab, you did very well. Captain, as usual, you did very well. And Corey, you got a lot of compliments in the chat for your moderating. Again, it looked like I can't fire you as the moderator. Yes, it's no possibility. It's no possibility. Oh, man, I'm going to get hate mail for that. And I want to say to all the people at Fanbase, from Clubhouse, from YouTube, YouTube world, the Facebook world who supported the debate, Thank you for supporting the channel and thank you for coming in. And thanks for the super chats, by the way, too. All right. And um, after the debate, I'm going to just probably do a um, vocab. You could just call me and I do a, a conference call with you and um, and um, Captain after the debate. All right. What I yield the mic to the court. Uh, vocab. So I got it set for five minutes. Would you be utilizing your screen? Uh, I see you shake, shake your head. Yes, but your um, mute mic is. Um, so I'll bring your screen up. And before you start your presentation on the five minutes, if you can give your handles first where we can actually find you at around social media to continue to follow you. And then once you start to get into like the edification part, then that's when I'll start the time. We can't hear you. I don't know if that's a me thing or a you thing. I can't hear you. Uh, I apologize. Yes, my bad. Across okay. all all uh, social media, it is uh, just at vocab alone, and then also at uh, street apologist. Uh, those are the the way to get a hold. Uh, primarily, youtube.com slash vocab alone. You can follow me and interact there. All right. The time will start whenever you start on your presentation. All right, thank you. Here are some of the scriptures we covered tonight. I believe we covered every one of those except the, uh, I think, the Hebrews passage. I never got to mention that. Uh, there's more, of course. And these are some of the scriptures that are supportive of what we discussed tonight. The fact that Jesus Christ was born without the aid of a human father. Here's the reasons that flowed out of that. We didn't get to all of these, but let's review these. The proto-euangelion of Genesis 3.15, where a woman is described as having seed, and that's fulfilled when it says he was bruised in Isaiah 53, which was fulfilled at the cross. And Paul mentions in 1 Timothy 2, the woman being saved through childbearing. These all are the connective tissue of the proto-euangelion. Similar with the virgin verse prophecy. When you take it from Isaiah 7 to go to Isaiah 9 and 11, you'll see there's a son who's given who is from the root. Interesting. The tree's been chopped down, but there's a little piece 
where a house of David is basically going to start again, and that's done through Jesus Christ. Isaiah 7, 14 is said to be fulfilled in Matthew 1, 23. We can't avoid that. But Matthew and Luke did avoid ever in their own words directly ever calling Jesus the Father or saying that they knew each other in the way that the Tsariach wants. Very interesting when you see Luke say things like, as was supposed, Matthew avoiding saying Jesus was fathered by Joseph. That is very significant. That is very significant. Do not fool yourself to think those are not huge points against you if you deny the virgin birth. Matthew's entire narrative frame supports it. He says the birth of Jesus Christ came about in this way. Joseph was a just man. Matthew describes him. The whole version that Tazariak and ISUPK gives doesn't make him a just man. It makes him a spineless coward of a man. And that's not who he was. They did not know each other. They did not come together. He has to insert his own phrase about weddings and stuff. I read some about that. He honestly needs to look more into the customs of the Hebrews at this time, and he'll see that he's simply incorrect about that. Likewise, he needs to look more into what Parthenos is. Mary's called that multiple times, and look at the way that word is used in the rest of the New Testament. Virgin, 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 virgin. And that's what Mary's question was. How's that going to happen? I don't know, man. Gabriel's answer is not that you're going to have sex. It's they're going to be inception that's divine even though you were a virgin we saw luke use of pronouns how they showed and also matthew did the same thing how they showed just in these subtle ways support for the virgin birth that they're discussing it's not like that's all we've got but it's the subtle hints and the ones that are on the nose we didn't get to that one so i'm gonna skip that we did touch briefly on Paul's awareness. And I showed that by the Greek words he used three times. All I ask people to do is compare Galatians 4.4 4 in the Greek to Galatians 4.23 and see how the birth of Jesus is described, which is made versus Ishmael. He uses two different Greek words. There's no denying that. He's clearly aware. And I also believe the author of Hebrews was when he says, without mother or father, this sort of allegorical illusion that the author of Hebrews draws from Melchizedek to Jesus. Lastly, we showed how if you understand Mary to be Luke, uh, Luke to be recording Mary's genealogy, you avoid contradictions and curses, whereas Caesarea's position, it avoids neither. This is what it looks like when you put it all together. Jesus, the son of God. Now, it's funny he brought up church fathers. He, had, he thought he had something there. <laughs> Those guys agreed with the virgin birth. They just had a different view on the genealogies, which are not even needed to make the case. All these people in the early church, Origen, who was an African, Tertullian, who was an African, Justin, who was born in Israel, Chrysostom, Epiphanius, Eusebius, who he brought up, Rufinus, Ignatius, Clement of Alexandria, which is in Africa, Aristides, Apostles' Creed, a very early yeah, creed, the that. Nicene Creed, Council of Castellan, Basil, Melito, Jerome, an African, Theodotus. Irenaeus and the apocryphal proto Evangelion of James all support the virgin birth. Why doesn't Tazariok? Simply because he's out of step with the earliest believers of, of, of the gospel. The virgin birth is the essential historical indication of the incarnation, bearing not only an analogy to the divine and human natures of the incarnate, but also bringing out the nature, purpose, and bearing of this work of God to salvation. Carl F. Henry wrote that a long time ago in the middle of the 20th century when liberals were denying the virgin birth because they didn't believe God could act supernaturally. Miller Erickson says, if we do not hold to the virgin birth, despite the fact that the Bible asserts it, that we have compromised the authority of the Bible and there is in principle no reason why we should hold to its other teachings, I might add to Zariac, doesn't. Thus, rejecting the virgin birth has implications reaching far beyond the doctrine itself. And you saw that when I asked about Adam and he said, oh, yeah, he had a father. Uh, you saw that when he asked about reincarnation, which he believes in. Jay uh, Grissomachian, who wrote, did you say time? Yes, sir. OK, I'll stop there. Right. Thank you. We got no problem. We got five minutes back on the clock for the closing statement for Captain Cesario. Uh Let me close vocab screen now. And Cap, would you be utilizing the screen for your closing statement? Yeah, I'll be using that. Just give me utilizing. Let me um, present. Yeah, if you can share it right quick. <clears throat> and make sure y'all follow Vocab Malone on his handles, Vocab Malone on all social media as well as at street apologists as well you can interact with them there make sure y'all following the brother garfield podcast subscribe to it on youtube um and make sure you are supporting financially for uh the funds help the uh 
bring in former debaters to bring out edification on his magnitude. Um, Cap, are you ready to go? Did you share? Let me get it up on there. Yeah, I'm sharing it. You should see uh, genealogy. You should see. You see my screen, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. And I got it at five minutes. Cap, if you can start off with um, your social media handles and whatever uh, merch you would like to let people know about. That, that's included in my five minutes. No, it's not. So oh, okay. You, if you communicate that, um, I'll only start the time once you start to talk about your presentation or whatever you presented. I got you. Uh, my handles are Tazariak on Facebook, um, Instagram, um, pretty much everywhere. My YouTube is a little different. It says um, In the Lab Podcast. Um, also, you can find me on Cross the Line Radio. You can find my store on Amazon, which I'm putting on the screen right here. If you want to smell, fly, get you some women, keep your man, I can help you out with that. Uh, you can check that out. I'm going to go ahead and get in my presentation now. Um, I am, wait, before I do that, I am on Amazon. I used to, you know, everybody knows I'm on Etsy, but I'm also on Amazon. You can see Carl Gas. You can find that right on Amazon for the flyers, body butters, and noise you can find anywhere you want. All right. So now I'm going to get to it. Uh, and I'm glad he brought up uh, the, the lineage because I'm a, it, gave, it gives me time to take these five minutes to break down why I mentioned the church fathers because unlearned individuals like vocab do this. This title was, according to prophecy, is Jesus the son of Joseph. He did not counter any scripture I showed that according to prophecy, Jesus had to be the physical son of Joseph. He did not show one. He gave ad homs, wanted to bring up the word virgin as if that was the point, and hit bread and butter seems to be the lineage. Right here, if you look, I always tell people that Matthew is a generational lineage. So even when you look at the kings in Matthew, they skip four kings, four. They skip Ahiza, if I'm saying the name wrong, I apologize, Joash, Amaziah, Jehoiakim. They skip them because it's a generational one. And Luke is longer. So why is that? So now I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint and show you why I use. And you notice I said your church fathers. I said that on purpose because I don't agree with the church fathers and everything they say if it contradicts the Bible. So we're going to read what Julius Africanus wrote about the lineages. It says, whereas in Israel... The name of the generations were enumerated either according to nature or according to law. Sidebar, when he brought up Onas and tried to make it say that God had somebody raise up son that wasn't his, even that required sex. I want everybody to know that. God wouldn't make somebody raise up. So anyway, according to nature or according to law. According to nature, indeed, by the succession of legitimate offspring and according to law, whenever another raised up children to the name of the brother dying childless. For because no clear hope of resurrection was yet given them, they had a representation of the future promise and a kind of mortal resurrection with the view of perpetuated the name of one deceased. Whereas then of those entered in this genealogy, some succeeded by legitimate descent. As the son to the father, while others begotten in one family were introduced in another name, mentioned in therefore made of both of those who were progenitors in fact and of those who were only so in name thus neither of the evangelists matthew and luke is in error as the one reckons by nature and the other by law for the several generations those descending from solomon and from those from nathan were so intermingled by the raising up of children to the childless and by second marriages and the raising up of seed that the same persons are quite justly reckoned to belong at one time to the one at another time to another. This is important. It's telling you that they kept the law of a brother. So if a man died childless within the house of David, they would raise up seed for the brother, i.e. to their reputed or to their actual fathers. And hence it is that both these accounts are true and come down to Joseph, Luke and Matthew with considerable intricacy indeed, but yet quite accurately. But in order that we have said that may be evident, I shall explain the interchange of the generations. If we reckon the generations from David through Solomon, Methan is found to be third from the end, who begat Jacob, the father of Joseph. But if with Luke we reckon from them Nathan, the son of David, in like manner, the third from the end is Melchi, whose son was Heli, the father of Joseph. For Joseph was the son of Heli, the son of Melchi, as Joseph 
Therefore, as the object proposed to us, we have to show how is it that it is represented as his father. Both Jacob as descending from Solomon and Heli as descending from Nathan. First, how these two, Jacob and Heli, were brothers. And then also how the fathers of these, Mathan and Melchah, being of different families, are shown to be the grandfathers of Joseph. Well then, Mathan and Melchah having taken, One minute the, left. having taken the same to wife in succession, begat children who were uterine brothers, as the law did not prevent a wid widow, whether such by divorce or by death from a husband from marrying another. By Esther then, for such is her a name according to, to, to tradition. Mathan first the descendant of Solomon begats Jacob, and on Mathan's death, Melchah, who traces his descendant back to Nathan, being of the same tribe but of another family, having married her, has already been said as the son of Heli. Thus we find Jacob and Heli, uterine brothers, though of different families, and of these the one Jacob having taken the wife of his brother Heli, who died childless. This is written in Julius Africanus, the epistle to Aristides, who clearly shows and proves that both lineages in Matthew and Luke belong to Joseph. Y'all can stop talking about Mary going forward if you really want to. Tom, make sure y'all follow in both uh, combatants tonight. Excellent form of debate. Uh, the title was is Joseph the biological father of Jesus according to prophecy? Um, throw in the chat who you feel took it tonight. Throw in who you felt won. Was it vocab? Was it cap? Uh, give clarity. Uh, give your opinions all inside of the chat. A shout out to Captain Cesariak. Make sure y'all go to Call Gas on Amazon as well as uh, on Etsy. Uh, to support his merch, make sure y'all follow Vocab Malone on all social social media at Vocab Malone or at Street Apologies. Uh, Brother Garfield, are you here? Yes, I'm here, my brother. I'm here. I'm here. The floor right. is yours. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Oh, so you used me and left? <laughs> yeah, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out oh, man. I'm proud of you guys, man. Good debate. Good debate. Um, I'm gonna say this, man, publicly, man. Vocab, you did an excellent job, bro. You did an excellent job. You had Captain against the ropes. Couple of, Captain had to come with a couple of uppercuts. He he laughing over there. He knew you threw a couple of body a couple of body bags his way. We got we got to admit that. If you look at the audience, even some of the the Israelites was like vocab. That was a good one. So you got compliments on both sides from both sides. The Christians. Did their thing in the audience, and the Israelites did their thing. He had a couple of couple of one or two knuckleheads, but pretty much it was a pretty good audience tonight. See, true ID said, um, vocab whip captain hands down, definitely Captain Tazaria, my career, and so forth. But hey, I'm gonna close out the show. I don't know. Are we doing an after party? You doing an after party, Captain, or you want me to do one? What are you doing? No, nah, I'm in Atlanta with my family, so my brothers right. and sisters, so I'll be uh chilling here. Oh no, man! Should we do an after party, Corey? You want to do an after party? Or are you, uh, yeah, you going man, to bed? If, if you want to crank one up, we can crank one up. Maybe even on the God First Game platform on fan base, man. We may crank one up. All right, do it. Do it over at fan base. Everybody, um, you got a link you want to put in the chat so everybody could jump over there. I won't be. I won't be able to throw the link in because fan base is weird. Uh, simply go to God First Game exclamation point put uh exclamation point at the end of gang capitalized g-a-n-g -G, gang you will be able to find that quote-unquote camp it's actually called camps on fan base uh, hey, I like uh, <laughs> so uh, i'm gonna I'm try to join you over there i might try to join you over there yeah yeah join me over there man so we can actually rap about it um because this ain't you know i want to shout out the versus platform right here on brother garfield uh platform usually on versus uh, if you're moderating or you're trying to keep time, you can never, ever give your opinion to the debate. But this is not the versus platform. This is Brother Garfield podcast. So I actually want to give my honest opinion on what I've seen from both uh, debaters tonight. So we'll be running an after party room on the guy first gang on fan base. So we'll be creating. Hey, let me know when you start that room, Corey. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to I'll try to ping you in and uh vocab just follow it over there and then I, i'll follow you and bring you up as well and we'll all rap about it and i'll get right. my honest opinion but uh shout out to brother garfield make sure y'all subscribing to this platform you know he, he's he said he was going to be dropping heat he ain't stopped dropping heat so we can't knock the brother 
Um, the brother has his own, uh, I would say, biblical views or, you know, uh, non-biblical views. But <laughs> non -biblical at the same time, he has a platform that he's allowing uh, people to communicate what they feel um, their spiritual values are. Um, so shout out to Brother Garfield. Make sure y'all following and supporting this uh, platform. And thanks for having me. And uh, thank you, Vocab. As well okay. as that. is there something you want me to put on the screen before we go? We got 800 people in the chat. What do you want to do, brother? Uh, well, I just want to say thank you to Corey. You did a good job hosting and uh, moderating. And thank you to Captain Cesarek. He did a great job and stayed on topic and responded to, I mean, you know, he did everything you would you would want out of a like a high uh, quality debater. So shout out to that. Shout out to Garfield putting it together. And shout out to uh, Faithful to God. Dinu, Abu, and Eric Manhara as I bounced different ideas off of them at various times, and uh, they were very helpful, uh, so I appreciate that. Specifically, a Faithful to God gave me the Tobit 8-3 uh, for you, Tazariak, so uh, shout out to that brother, and I'll try to join you on fan base. Yeah, he should have gave you a scripture to show the prophecy change. That's what he should have <laughs> gave you. <laughs> if I was arguing that, sure. Come on, man. I ain't interrupt you, man. When you're talking, man. He should have gave you a verse to help you with that. I mean, you was, you was, you, I'm going to tell you something. If we show who was professional, who was not, vocab definitely was not professional. He spent, if this was an hour debate, he spent about 20 minutes talk about my school and R.E.R. and Michael, House of David and all of that stuff like that. But he did not counter and show where the prophecy changed to go from being um the son or loins of david to now just a woman by herself he did not do that but um it definitely was a good debate you know virgin or excuse me this subject is one of the subjects that uh won me into the truth which is why i know it like the back of my hand um so it definitely was a good debate i love garfield's platform looking forward to using a lot utilizing the platform again Corey is a good moderator good crowd too there wasn't a lot of nonsense in the uh the crowd um, so I look forward to doing the next uh, debate. Garfield, you let me know if that cat signed up for it, because that would be fire if we um, could get that debate going. Shout out to my man, Pastor Bennett. I do like that brother. He's one of the uh, top. I would put I was, him about, I was about to say he's lurking in the audience. Watch, yeah, out, watch yeah. how you speak. Watch how you mention the great Pastor nah, Bennett. Listen, watch it. Listen watch him out. Pastor Bennett is like somebody you put up there as an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, debater. When I was preparing for my battle against uh, Chris Harris, I watched I actually watched one of his debates that he had uh, with Chris Harris. So he's a good debater. So with that, I'm going to say shalom. I'll see y'all later, man. Um, it was my pleasure to be up in the building with you, Garfield. If you got anything else, just let me know. All right? Yeah, definitely. I'm going a, um, I'm to a, I'm a see if Volcab called me so we could do a quick three-way. And uh, Okay, yeah, I could do that. Now, I could do that. If you do get him on the phone, and yeah, I can I'll get on the phone you, for that. Yeah, let's see what we I might want to do next if you're down. Yeah, no sweat. I'm fine with that. And uh, right. Garfield, maybe you can get someone like Haka on here okay. to, to, to leave his safe space of his own channel and come out where he's got to obey, obey, abide by our rules. Hey, hey, I, hey, I'm out, Garfield. Let me know when y'all had that call. All right, cool. No problem, bro. Appreciate you, man. 100%. Appreciate, 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 appreciate. Um, let me see what else. Any Anybody else? Pastor Bennett, man. Oh, man, I miss my pastor, man. My pastor is in the building. Corey, you got to watch it, man. Pastor Bennett is here. You got to show <laughs> reverence, man. Reverence to my pastor, man. You notice you notice Tazarek's tone of voice changed when Pastor Bennett come in, came on the screen, right? You notice his tone, like it just came down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, who going to start the room? You going to start the room? I'm, I'm starting it now. I actually just created it, but since I was still over here, it kicked me out. So I'm going to restart it and then uh, ping, uh, try to ping everybody in. Make sure y'all, uh, we got 760 people on here. Y'all should be downloading fan base if you don't already have fan base. And then follow the God First Gang camp. God First Gang hashed, uh, uh, excuse me, exclamation point. G-O-D-F-I-R-S-T-G-A-N-G. Exclamation point. Hey, good job. Good job by the moderators, by the way, too. Good job, man. Y'all held it down real good tonight, man. The moderators did good. We read as much questions as possible, although the questions weren't the best. But, I mean, we made the best out of them <laughs> questions. Yeah, so, I think okay. I might have to end it. I don't know how to just leave. Do I just... Nah, we, we, could, we could end the show. We could end the show.
All right, good day. Oh, you, you could just drop off. You could just drop off. You, you can't drop off? Yeah, I, I, it don't say leave. So I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put you in the back chat. I'm going to put you in the back. That's what I'm going to do. All right? So I'll catch you. I'll catch you over there at um, Fanbase. If anybody want to jump on and have an opinion before we close out in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to I'm gonna keep it um open. <laughs> true ID. Yeah, what up? What up, true ID? He said three dollars per hour. Anybody want to jump on, have an opinion about the debate? The link is in the chat. You could jump on and catch it. Shout out to Wisdom in the building. My man, true ID. He said he won three dollars per hour. <laughs> hey, that's reasonable, man. That's reasonable. Reasonable right here, man. Reasonable. Princess Labaya, what's up? What's up, sis? She said Captain Tazariak won. All right, that's what's up. Hold on one second. All right, JJ7000. I don't know if I want to hear JJ. JJ, I don't know if I want to hear you, man. I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to hear JJ. What's up, JJ? Crazy, man. What's up? Something's wrong with your mic, bro. You got to come out, come out and come back in. Something's wrong with your mic. Shout out to Lita for Christ. Shout out to Dr. Monica Lamb. Check her out on Wednesdays. She got her economic show going on on here. Let me see who else. Cap got smacked around. Y'all could vote, by the way. Y'all could vote. The vote's there. Let me see. Let me see. Um, I see my man. My man. My man um, is in the building. Trilla is in the building. The after party is on fan base. So if you go on fan base and just look for God first gang, that room, you know, you're good to go. Shout out to Sister Nakia in the building. Let me see who else. Who else I want to give a shout out? Uh, all right. True ID. Peace in the building. Who won the poll? Let me see. We already know who won. Maria Stevenson. Let me look in the poll. The poll says... How many people voted? 339 people voted. 61% said Tazariak won. You just got to go over there and look for God first again. That's all. JT Mack, let me see what you got to say. What's up? What's in your mind, brother? Hey, man. What you got going tonight, man? See, what's up? What's in your mind, brother? What's up, man? Hey, look here, man. I'm not gonna even. I'm not gonna even because when I jumped on, and I got to go back and listen to the replay. But I'm pretty sure that vocab hit on these specific scriptures, and the chat and the polling. I already knew how that was gonna go based on the people that was in the chat. So, uh, but I'm gonna say this: I do not understand how anybody. You know, and I know you're not, you know, religious. Mm -hmm. I get that. But I want to say this to the people that are listening, Garfield, if that's okay. I do not understand how anybody can follow a man who clearly ignores specific, explicit scriptures that specifically, explicitly say that the woman had known no man. She knew no man, that the Holy Spirit came upon her, and that that was the prophecy, that was what was foretold to her by the angel after she said she knew no man. And that she would have, a, and she would be with child. Mm -hmm. It even says that Joseph didn't even touch her until after she had the child. So I don't know how anybody could follow a man. Hold on, hold on one second, bro. I got the fan base link. I'm gonna put it in the chat for those who want to go over to fan base for the after show. I'm gonna put the fan base link in the chat right now. Hold on, let me put it in the chat right now. For anybody who wants to jump on the fan base, brother Corey and them, the link is in the chat, so y'all could jump on at that. All right, let me see what we got. Uh, we got Mark, ma'am. Go ahead, JT Mac. You could finish. What okay, you yeah, let me. Yeah, I'll land my plane on this. I just, again, you know how you can follow a man who clearly tried to explain away the explicit scriptures and tried to explain away <laughs> 2,000 years of church history who actually believed that she was born a virgin to come up with some something that's not clearly taught by scripture, but he's the one that's got the truth. 
he's the one that's out here teaching this heresy and people follow him off the ledge. And so that's my astonishment and my concern. I could see if scripture taught, you know, that was scriptures that taught what he's talking about, but it doesn't. And so this is horrible. You know, I, I, you know, I know there are debates and, you know, discussions and whatnot, but on a spiritual level, this is horrible. That's all I'm going to say. And thanks a lot for having me on. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to close out the show. Um, who is that? Mark Mayhem. Go ahead, my brother. Mark, go ahead. I'll mute your mic. All right. All right, peace and love, man. I'm going to jump over the fan base, man. Peace and love to y'all. Thanks for tuning in, family. Thanks for the support. We got shows on Mondays. We got shows on Sundays. We got shows on Wednesdays. We got more debates coming up, man. I got um, October 5th. I got Dr. Richard Carrier talking about is Daniel a forgery, and we're going to touch on some other stuff, some crazy Egyptomania stuff. We got Dr. Kip Davis, October 12th, Dr. Mayat on the 19th, and then we got some more people. So Thursdays is history and the Bible on here, all right? All right, peace and love, family. We out of here. Thank you. Peace.